to prepare our babies to go to school. That is the work of a mother, but we can warm ourselves up, even though we didn't go back to our blankets. DJ, DJ, we are waiting for a song that can warm and energize this team. Do you know who you are? We are the chosen generation.
We want to continue, but before we continue, allow me to humbly invite uh, the pastor in our presence so that he can lead us in a word of prayer, our opening prayer for the day. It is always good to acknowledge that in everything, it is all by the grace of God. Darwin, you are welcome. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for that. Let's appreciate him. He's going to lead us in prayer. Amen. Let's appreciate our sister in Jesus' name. And give the Lord Jesus a good clap this morning. Come on, you can appreciate Jesus better than that. Somebody say amen. Just a scripture because this is about succession. The Bible also has something about it. Uh, Proverbs chapter 13 verse 22. It says a good man or a good woman. Somebody say both. Good. A good man or a good person leaves an inheritance. Somebody say amen. So you may barikiwa na buwana. Say amen. If you want God to bless something, you find his word concerning it. So we have stood on God's word in this matter. Let's lift our hands and pray. Father, we honor you. We glorify you for the gift of life, for the gift of this day, even for this gathering. In the name of Jesus, we say thank you. Lord, we are standing here to learn, to be sharpened, to move to a new level concerning planning our future and the things you have given to us. We pray our ears of understanding be open. Let us grasp something from this. We speak your blessing upon our speaker. Let your grace be upon them. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Sante. Thank you very much. Thank you. We give God a hearty clap before we sit down. Thank you, thank you. As we sit, as we do what? Because I requested people to move to the front. And they decided they will not occupy the front seats. I'm going to make sure they occupy the front seats. But I know what I'll do. Before then, Evelyn Mokami, you can give us a safety brief of the area where we are in. Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Evelyn Mokami from the Quality and Safety section. So you're presently at the back of the Geodamo Plaza. To get to the washrooms, simply proceed into the entrance at the back. The ladies are on these extreme ends of the building and the gents are on this, in every floor except the third floor. In case of an emergency, we're just going to proceed outside the tent, find ourselves near the entrance, and then line up in our respective uh, sections. And for that reason, because we are different sections today, you're going to have a buddy system so that when you get to the assembly point, ensure whoever was your buddy, you know that they are there. In these places, the hazards are simply tripping and, ha and fire, so please be careful when you're moving around to have a safe day. Wow, thank you. Can we give her a big, a good clap? Now, I have some gifts that I want to give a few people. Who wants a gift this morning? <laughs> she, needs, she deserves one. Thank you. She's the first person who will get the gift that I want to give. But before then, because she wants my first gift, kindly come, just, just come near where I am. I'll give you the gift. Just come here, then you ask your question. 
kindly. Thank you as you come. Thank you very much. Who else wants my gift? Who else wants a gift from Madam Naomi? You want one? Kindly just come, just come. Let me I'll I'll give you the best. Nani mwingine anataka zawadi? Naona wengine hawataki. You want my gift? Thank you. Just come. Niko na mingi aziziisha. There are many, there are many. Now the first gift that I'll award to somebody. <coughs> eh, we all came here. Why did you come here? Why are you here? Can somebody tell me why he or she is here or you just found yourself here? Thank you. Kindly tell us why are you here? You are here to learn about succession. Thank you. I'll give you a gift. Kindly come. Come and sit here, then I'll give you my gift. Let's clap for her as she comes. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Just have a seat. Who else knows why he or she is here? Or you just found yourself here by mistake? Nobody found themselves here by mistake. So we all have a reason why we are here, isn't it? So what is your expectation? What do you want to know? What, what made you sacrifice your time, your sleep to be here this morning? I need at least 10 people to tell me why they are here or what they expect to learn in this day. Did you just come? Are you expectant? When I mean expectant, I don't mean a mother who is expectant. I mean our hearts are expectant to receive what we are going to be taught today. And just like a mother who carries a pregnancy to term and gives birth, we see the results of the baby. We also have our expectations today and these expectations will eventually give or bear fruits in our lives. So what are our expectations? Somebody. Lali. So lots of times uh, in, the, uh, in the unfortunate event that an employee passes away, we get to deal with uh, spouses and uh, so we need to be in a position to know what we need to tell these spouses. We need to be able to advise them correctly and that's why I'm here today. I, I'm looking forward to learning about uh, everything succession so that when they come we can be able to give them correct information. Thank you very much. Let's clap for Lali. That's a good expectation from her. I want a gent to tell us. Thank you. Our guest is arriving. Let's stand up and welcome him. Kindly let's be on our feet as we clap for him. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We can get seated. I want somebody, I want a gent to tell me why he is here. Some people just think it's a pink energy event. It's only meant for ladies. But we invited the men. We reached out to the men. And we told them you are most welcome. So what is your expectation in this forum? Any gentleman. The man in the house kindly wave at me. Hi. The men in the house. Oh God. You know I was taught. Men have the deepest voice. When they say hi, they say hi. <laughs> but I can only hear hi. That's from ladies. I want to see hi. Hi. Ladies, men in the house. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now, somebody tell me their expectation. I saw a hand up. For this chance, allow me to be selfish. I'll give two men to tell us why they are, he why, why they are here and what is their expectation. Kindly. Hi. Good morning, all of you. My name is James. I'm from Drilling and Logistics. We work together with George Diane. I am here because we get to deal with matters succession, whether here in Kenyan or outside there where we come from. We want to know what we've gotten from our predecessors, our parents, our guardians, whether it was legal, whether we can revisit. 
we can do revisit if it was illegal if whatever succession was left behind by my late dad was not legal what avenues of revisit can i use that is why personally i came here it's not necessarily for what i own but we are coming from places where like myself i have lost my dad he had his estate he left a, a will i don't know which, whether it's legal or whether it can be disputed because he wasn't a lawyer and uh, he did it his own way customarily maybe it was an illegality which can be reviewed thank you thank you very much let's clap for him that's a good expectation he wants to understand He wants to understand whether whatever is owned, not necessarily by him, but even his parents or even other people, whether it is legal. If it is not, how do you go about it? If it is legal and somebody else also tries to snatch that property, how do you go about it? So that is a very good expectation. Another gentleman. I need another expectation from a gentleman. Oh, here. Yeah, thank you. Tell us your name and your expectation good morning okay i'm wamogo the amber from geophysics section uh the reason as to why i'm here is because uh it was an invitation and uh for me i don't know what pink energy is <laughs> and uh, I, i've only heard of uh, the green energy and so <laughs> And so the expectation is big and uh yeah well thank you let's clap for him let's clap for him i can see we have a, a challenge but not necessarily a challenge when you when the when the word moved out there that pink energy is having a conference do i call it a conference yes it is global we are being watched live globally so it is a big conference Everybody wanted to know what is this, what is pink energy, and especially our interns, our attaches. Now I have a question for the ladies. What is pink energy? Somebody, anybody, tell us. I also want to know. I don't know. Who is willing? I still have my gifts, by the way. Who is willing? Nobody. I pinpoint. I pick on anyone. Do I pick do I have the permission to pick on anyone? Do I have the permission? How many for yes? Everybody is for yes, so I can pick somebody. Don't look down because if you look down you you it be the person I'll pick. So don't look down, just look up, look at me because if you look down you might be the person I'll pick. Don't look down. If you look down you might be the person I'll pick. Thank you very much. Kindly enlighten us what is pink energy? What are you? Who are you? What do you do? So that those of us who don't know, I included, can know. Thank you very much as you tell us. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ruth Cheruyat from Environment. Uh, <coughs> pink, pink energy uh came into place uh to help uh improve or increase the okay i'm looking for a word to put a uh, in a potter you are allowed to use mother tongue <laughs> i might be fired <laughs> no i've given you permission but to empower so. women and to <clears throat> help address some of the issues that uh, ladies in the company uh, are facing, uh, not 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 to empower women at, at the expense of men, but to just bring on board uh, issues of uh, gender equity. Thank you very much. Let's clap for her. She has tried to 
narrowly or in layman's language explain to us what is pink energy and the role of pink energy i like the fact that we are not doing this at the expense of men men kindly take that home it is not a competition it is just a blending so that all of us can feel at a workplace that is incorporating every one of us cindy ama sio hivyo yes there is also blue energy nasiju do we have any leader from blue energy here maybe they are on the way coming i hope they are now i'm still back to my people who are at the back i'm still there because when we sit at the back those who are coming in a bit late because of one two three things may not be able to come towards the front wengi wanachukia macho mingi so let us kindly move to the front but because i know we are very lazy in doing that let us be on our feet i know how we are going to move everyone let us stand up we are now fit standing i have a visitor who is coming in a very important guest but only the people at the front who can be able to see him so if you are seated at the back you are not going to have the opportunity to see my guest and he's almost here i can see all heads are turning there are some people who are still who, used, who wants to see who, who is my guest anataka kujua mgeni wangu ni nani okay nani anataka zawadi yangu i still have more my pockets are still full i have some sweets some good candies who wants a key holder from me na muona kuja hapa mbele nitakupea thank you very much thank you for being obedient at least you've moved to the front we can now be back on our seats i just wanted us to stand up and have people move occupy the front seats thank you feel at home feel in all karia this event is meant for all of us to learn i also don't know but i have an expectation on what i want to learn i may not own property but at least i want to know if one day god blesses me that property how i should go about it now i'm still on the expectation another lady i want to see what is your expectation as my guest comes in one more person briefly in in a microsecond kindly uh, you may not even have told me your expectation uh, our general manager is coming in so i'll request that we will be upstanding as he gets in kindly let's welcome him let's stand up and welcome Thank you thank you let's welcome our general manager Mr. Peketa Mangi thank you sir for gracing our occasion feel most welcome thank you we can have our seats uh, good morning once more good morning once more wave at me if you can see me Thank you very much. Thank you for everybody who is in our midst for finding time to come to this event. And I believe all of us we are going to learn something good. We are not going to leave this place the same way that we walked in. And even as we learn, let us go out and share the same knowledge. Don't go and keep it to yourself. Remember, we always have a tag operations not being operations not being affected. So some people would not join us else they would op they would affect the else they would affect so don't keep the knowledge to yourself let us go out and kindly share whatever we are going to learn at this point i want to welcome one of us she is an incredible person a person who has growth in her heart and her mind a person who has a vision that is bigger than we can ever imagine for all of us and for this team a person who has steered this team to where we are today in this year kindly let us be upstanding and welcome none other than our own chair lady 
from the geothermal energy pink energy geothermal area dr anna mwangi let us be upstanding as we welcome her thank you very much thank you thank you um, you are most welcome thank you so thank much thank you yes good morning everyone um i'm so elated to be here before you as you've heard i'm the chair uh, pink energy geothermal and this is our event we organized it uh, for the ladies um, we have a mandate to help um, promote our ladies but sometimes we sit and think some of the programs that we are uh, making they are relevant not just to the ladies but to a wider audience also to our male colleagues and information that you can also use for your friends so that is why we decided to have this event uh, specifically to discuss the law of succession we all operate under the law of kenya and there are things that really affect us and sometimes we don't know much about them so this is why we made this event here and we're very happy that we got the support of our management as you can see um so we are just more than happy to be here serving all of you my office is here um i have one representative uh, our vice chair kate um i can't see her oh there she is she's sitting at the back so that's our vice chair um the rest of the office they are on leave and so that's why they could not join us um but without um for much further ado i want to invite um uh, <laughs> i want to invite miss maria to come and say a word also because she's our hr and um she's the one who has also uh, supported us to have this event so that she can also help us welcome our gm karibu sana Good morning, everybody, and uh, a very warm welcome this uh, chilly morning to our session uh, today. We are excited uh, about it because I, we believe it's a, it's a very uh, pertinent uh, issue that surrounds us, not just here, but even in our, our, our societies back home. So we are excited. We want to, uh, again, reiterate our support to the Pink Energy uh, to, as they've organized this session and other sessions that are coming. We want to uh, commend them for bringing, uh, bringing this pertinent topic to us. So mine is just to uh, welcome you and to urge you to ask all your questions. We have a very knowledgeable speaker coming before us today. And so we really want all those questions that you've ever had about succession, inheritance, and all those issues, please ask them here today. For those that have not been able to join us and are watching us online, please share the link with others. We've shared a link that uh, you can watch us on YouTube right now. So those that know others who are in the office who are not able to attend, please share the link so that everybody can, can be able to participate. So uh, without further ado, I know time is much spent. We want to thank the GM uh, for even agreeing to host this session today. And we want to invite him to give a few remarks, remarks before we... Uh, invite our speaker. So, Bona GM Karibu. Bona Sphere. Um, I think I'm a little far, so I'll, you'll allow me to remove my mask. Now, first of all, I want to really appreciate each one of you for uh, making time to come and um, commune with each one of us on this uh, event organized by Pink Energy. Um, a very important event for all of us, uh, not just uh, you know for Pink Energy, but then also for the Blue Energy. And I know, I don't know whether we still have members here or Blue Energy, uh, but uh, I'm sure we know that we have Blue Energy also within Kenjin. Um, to me, I really want to 
Uh, first of all, I uh, appreciate our Kenyan management. As you know, the Pink Energy was a brainchild of our managing director and CEO, Madam Rebecca Miano. And this particular um, uh, effort has continued to grow within Kenyan. And it has become an icon for other organizations also in Kenya and also worldwide. And they want to copy from us. And it is because of the value that this particular effort is adding to our operations and functions. Uh, allow me uh, to thank the Pink Energy leadership here at Olkaria for the good work that you are doing. Um, it is great that we are seeing a lot of agility in the work that you're doing. And um, you have not isolated Pink Energy from the men as well. I mean, you have always involved the men because together, um, of course, the men, the ladies and the men will be able to, to you know, basically achieve more if you work together. So much appreciation uh, for the good work that we are doing. Uh, of course, I also want to appreciate HR here because I know you are working very closely with HR uh, to be able to run this program. So much appreciated uh, Pink Energy leadership and HR as well. I also want to really appreciate uh, the guest speaker of today um, for honoring us with your presence and agreeing to come and talk to us about the law of succession. Um, succession issues are difficult and they're complex. And, and, and I want to say that um, this has probably been caused by the frustration that societies go through uh, during you know, succession, especially when they lose the loved ones who are the breadwinners. So it's not, it's basically a societal problem. And it is also a Kenyan problem and a world problem. So for you agreeing to come and talk to us about this, it is an honor to us. And I hope then all of us will be able to ask all the questions that we have uh, so that, um, uh, you know, as we go out of here, we, we, we are a little more enlightened about uh, what you need to do when you are still alive so that as God takes us away, because that is inevitable, then we don't leave problems behind. Pink Energy, um, you've looked at, you've seen it fit to, you know, to introduce this topic. And to me, ladies suffer most in society as a result of succession issues. There are two levels. Now, the first level is succession issues within the family, within the core of the family, where you have, um, you know, the, the figurehead or the father who has a wife and children. Um, but then along, along the way, due to other issues, you know, in the family, the, the man uh, also creates another family on the sides. I think we call it um, in Kenya, I think it's Mpango Yakando. But as soon as, of course, you, have a, you start having children, it does not become Mpango Yakando anymore. So it becomes one of the mainstream treasures now. Some of these families are not recognized. So when the man goes, is taken away to be with the Lord, then what happens is a lot of fights. And we've seen this. It's not a topic, it's not something that is not there. It has happened. So the ladies suffer more because then they have to go through a lot of struggle and a lot of stress as they see how to foot or, or to have a balance in, 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 in the new life. 
And the men normally um, we are never available. I think the love of the of the woman, the family, and the society cannot be equal to the love of the man. Um, and and I always want to remember what happens when Jesus was crucified, and even when he resurrected. I can only, if you go through the Bible, uh, that is John 20, for those of us who are little religious, from verse 11 all the way, when Jesus was crucified, I think Mary Magdalene and Mary the Virgin were the ones who are more pronounced and more available to go through that process. And even when Jesus resurrected, I think he appeared first to Mary Magdalene. So the lady or the woman in the society is more affectionate, but paradoxically, they are the ones who go through a lot of difficulties uh, during succession issues. So I've talked about the core family, but then in our cultural environment, when, when the father of the house goes, we have these others, the brothers and the sisters and, you know, those others who now come and, uh, you know, they want to grab everything. And this happens. Solution, probably just have one wife and, <laughs> and focus. zingine. <laughs> Uh, I know wale ambao wanajua atasema mbona huko na mbili. Mine was circumstantial. <laughs> but uh, but uh, but I think this uh, these lessons will be very good for me also to be able to manage myself. How nita nitagawanya. I think it is important uh, that uh, I as I, as I live because I won't stay forever anyway. I also, I don't leave suffering to the people that are believing. So we need to understand these issues um, so that it is clear that, uh, you know, um, this is how we're supposed to do it and we don't, we don't leave our people suffering once we've been taken to be with the Lord. So thank you very much. I don't want to take a lot of your time. I'm really eager to hear, you know, um, uh, what you need to do, I think it's helpful to every one of us. Um, and, and of course, nobody has a monopoly of knowledge. This is going to be very, very uh, useful to all of us. And I know Maria here goes to, through a lot of hell uh, dealing with these issues, especially uh, when, <laughs> when we've left. I mean, the men, I think you are the most uh, uh, chaotic fellows around. <laughs> so, he mambo ya kuandika, Maria was telling me, kuna moja, of course, we are not mentioning names, kuna moja alisema, my fiancé, these are the children, then my girlfriend. Sasa, <laughs> si umalizane na fiancé kwanza, di utaje girlfriend. So, please, um, but I think it's because uh, of lack of knowledge, probably, we need to um, seriously think about this and especially when we, we want to leave our, our families not suffering uh, because the world, God intended that people live well and uh, I think it's our desire that uh, uh, we understand the law very well so that then we can be able to clean our, our records appropriately I'm sure after this, I will also be guided and I'll be able to see how to manage my situation. So thank you very much and God bless you. Um, thank you so much, uh, our GM, for those wonderful remarks. Uh, you have put it well, so let's avoid problems if we can. Um, this morning, I was very excited and my mother called me and I told her what I'll be doing today. 
And she was like, wow, that's a wonderful, relevant topic. And then after we finished, she called me again. She told me, and please tell them, as much as the parents are leaving their properties, let them also raise their children well, so that those children can also inherit the property and um, in a good way, so that they don't think we want our parents to go and then we can get what they want. So that was another note. Um, so without much further ado, allow me to introduce our speaker for today. He's a lawyer. His name is Daniel Kamunda. And he has a, a company uh, called uh, Kamunda Njue and uh, Company Advocates. Uh, they are based in Ojijo Plaza, first floor in uh, Nairobi, opposite Parkland Sports Club. So um, we thought it's good we get a professional who's been dealing with uh, these matters, uh, those ones that are family law and others, so that we can get to hear what are the provisions within the law, what is your responsibility uh, towards uh, what is going to happen when you are alive, and also what are your entitlements uh, if you are a child and you are supposed to follow up possibly on the inheritance. So um, we are excited. Mr. Kamunda, this is the group. We want to tell you that uh, the group that you see here, they are just a representation, a little representation of uh, Olkaria here. The other people that are joining us online in the company globally because we're live streaming. So everyone is really excited to to hear what you have to say as you help us navigate towards these uh, very relevant topics so that uh, we may avoid problems in future. So we welcome you to Olkaria and Karibu Sana to give us um, your talk. Welcome. Uh, good morning. If I'm too low, you alert me. If I'm too loud, you also alert me because I can spoil your eardrums if you don't take care of them. All right? So my name is Daniel Kamunda. Um, I'm a lawyer by profession. I'm sure most of you here are genius, if I'm not wrong. Am I right? Yes. Um, I studied law in uh, the University of Nairobi. Uh, some uh, 18 years uh, ago, and I graduated then, and uh, for the last 16 years, I was at a meeting to the bar, and I've been practicing law, and among them is family law. The reason I've said that is because uh, uh, succession is just a unit in the branch of law known as family law, because family law is broad. Succession is a unit in itself in the course or in the in the in the, the bachelor's degree of uh, law that uh, is a unit that covers a whole semester. So what I'll be saying today, I'll pick from the you know the basics, just to interact with you, not to lecture you. So I need people to understand that I'm not uh, lecturing because if I start lecturing here, even next week we shall be here. <laughs> We understand? So um, let me pick from the pink energy part. Uh, I was a bit hesitant until the GM said there's a blue energy because I also wanted to ask, what happens to blue energy? I didn't know actually this blue energy, <laughs> Mr. GM. I, I was happy to know that there's one. And uh, men, you know this 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 gender thing of women is about to overtake us. <laughs> you know, I've seen in many forums where I'll give an example. We started something as men friends somewhere, and very with a lot of energy. Then with the time we brought our spouses. And with the time, our energy stagnated somewhere. Then with the time, this, our spouses formed their own on the side, calling it part of us. Now they manage us. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I understand what is happening here. And I feel you, man. Uh, I don't know what happens to energy, GM. And, and probably that is what happens even when you're saying about... Uh, you start with a girlfriend on the side. 
<laughs> ni kidogo kidogo umesema wanaitanga mpango wa kando uh, me am an african i'll say that other woman becomes the woman and the energy goes and the reason i'm i'm putting it that way because my topic today is not talking about necessarily the, the family unit but also the social aspect because we must be real we must look at the reality today i i, I look at uh, people who are young here I want to tell you when I'm be defining succession is not necessarily what the society thinks succession is it's not necessarily the 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 the, the that limited family unit because suppose a young man who is about 24 years and 3 years they went to school early they started working as an engineer in Kenjin for example very early and by that time wamejipanga uh, so this person has a nested you know what you call properties the monies you have the cars you have it's called it culminates to the word estate you are estate so if that time you pass on you don't have a spouse you only have uh, parents probably or siblings are you saying that you're not subject of succession of course you are isn't it so are you saying that it's not about uh, uh, you know the behind is also moving forward you know so so uh for the men who came here thank you for uh, uh, accepting the call or the invite of pink energy because the pink energy also must know that they can't survive without the blue energy men in the house <laughs> do you agree with that <laughs> starting with the gm <laughs> isn't it Men in the house, you know, today, Nimesikia Mukiambiwa, na the host, why is she? Yes, you, the MC of the day, you, you, you are asking them, men, when you say, men, hi, hi. <laughs> men are supposed to be, hi, you know, be felt. You know, the same way you want to say, I'm the head of the family, so, ukikoa unasikika, sindio? Men, sorry, I'll mix language like that, so that uh, becomes an interactive session, eh? And I'm doing this so that I open up uh, your mind before I get to business. Uh, if I, if um, if if I go to Kiswahili and mix of English, just know I'm trying to open people up so that we interact, isn't it? Now, um, what is succession? Succession is more of uh, the legal process of uh, passing on the estate of a deceased person to the beneficiaries who survive him. Beneficiaries are the people who are defined by law as the legal uh, successors of a deceased person. Somebody spoke, one of the men, and uh, he was saying about, it's not about uh, uh, just what I live, it's also about what, did we do it well when my, my father left us? Someone was there, somebody said that. And I, I told myself, I'll pick it from there so that people understand. And because uh, when you came here, there's a the society understanding of succession, which is Mali Ababayetu to Taigawa Namnagani Akiondoka. See, that is the general understanding, isn't it? I want you to know that Mali uh, Zia Babayenu Pekeake, Ata Mamayenu Mutagawa Vipi. Hata ya sistako ya dadako mwenye ajaolewa na ajawa mutagawa vipi. All those people are subject of successions. They are, they are actually uh, people that you look at. They are, they are the people who uh, fall within the law of succession. You understand? Anybody who is uh, the age of 18 and above and has a nested that can be succeeded is subject of the law of succession. We are together up to there. Now, uh, there are certain aspects. There are certain aspects, and uh, and uh, I would like to, to 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 share with you certain aspects. Uh, the law of succession. Maybe you can have this. For you, I shared with you. You can have it. Now, uh, I'm not uh, sharing with them because I don't want to you to share. It's only because I'm seated with them. Uh, he had. Uh, more I would share with you, but uh, we shall sh I'll share with you verbally, isn't it? Now, succession has uh, two aspects. Among the aspects, 
among the aspects of uh, succession is what you call tested succession or when a man or a woman before they pass on they do a will they write a will a will is a document that uh, either it can be oral to some witnesses or to uh, you know to someone who you entrust with your estate after you pass on that person is called an executor in law for example if today um your md today if i use you as an example if you wrote down uh, or you or you call me and tell me uh this uh this is uh, the expansion of my estate my properties in in land in shares in investments in whatever these are the ones in the event i go today or tomorrow whichever the day this is how i would want these things to go down to the beneficiaries who are my people my people are my spouse or spouses my children or anybody who was your dependent and you would want them to benefit or to be protected by the value of your estate when you're gone now that is another one when he is doing that to me he must have maria and uh, dr anne here as witnesses are you getting that part he must have you know like when i mention them i mean at least two witnesses must be there to hear him tell me all that you understand uh, the land in akuru milimani i hope you have one there uh, one acre shall go to my son sam the house in mushomoroni wherever it will go to my daughter susan something like that you understand eh but now it's advisable that you put it in writing the one i've said is valid if it can be proved that uh, uh, you know when that time comes i must actually go and uh, sanctify it in court in a succession that uh, uh, when 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 we executing it we must do it through the court process also where i shall be the executor telling the court this is what the gm said and my witnesses are this they will do their either their affidavits in support of that you understand but now if there will be wrongs in your house gm you can imagine me proving an oral will of course i may prove it because i have witnesses okay but why go through that why don't you just reduce it into a written will now a written will uh the ingredients or the requirements are the same but now in writing so uh we go to your advocate for example and we write down uh the things i've said mr moroni nakuru milimani the cars you have and all that you know the shares the benefits are it we put them down and each of them to whom it will go to to which beneficiary it will go to the beauty of the will is uh men we are made with a lot of uh, with with uh, with a, we carry a lot of love uh, from ourselves to the world <laughs> to the world and do not misinterpret me i'll give an example uh do you realize uh people give to charity in a very good way for example there is a destitute child that uh, probably you support somewhere and you, maybe your wife doesn't know your people don't know and you genuinely do that and you realize that uh, should you wake up one day and you're not there that may be the end of that being whose life depended on you and whose future depended on you because for example you're supporting education we we do that we all do that and can you imagine that person being disowned by your family because probably uh, i don't know where your home place is gm and allow me to only use you yes um you can imagine 
you you don't stay here probably with your family in your workplace and somewhere in some school that i've seen around here there's an orphan somewhere you've been assisting that orphan you do not have to have necessarily disclosed that orphan to your family okay but for the for your heart your heart is telling you you know what i need to take care of that orphan whether i'm there or not so how do you protect that orphan he or she is your dependent how do you do that a will is the best place to do that okay let me even not go outside your family uh, gm you may be having a grandmother essentially uh you take care of your mother and you and everybody thinks that uh, your extension of care stops somewhere at your parents isn't it in most cases isn't it so but now you have uh, your your father or your mother and your their siblings or your uncles and aunties you've you've seen most cases where people abandon the old eh? then you took it as an obligation yourself that uh, this person I'm done will take care of them isn't it so how do you make sure that in the event you go ahead of her she will be taken care of to the to her last day the will is the best place to place that you understand so that at times we are different your spouse may be different your children may be dif different you know we are we are we we grew up in different times we also bring up our children in different times they may not have the vision that you have but you can place your vision in writing in a will that is so valid now that is an understanding of the will now what are the ingredients of a will so that one day when you want to do a will you must you, you just note these things one uh when you're doing your will yourself you must be of sound mind and in your right state of mind for example a will is challengeable if you do it in your hospital bed yes when you're healthy in your right mind in your right energy good health if you can do your will that time you will actually run away from challenges of validity of that will sound mind sound mind sound mind defines mind itself and health yes number two that will must specifically mention the beneficiaries the people to whom it must benefit okay all right of your choice it means therefore as i benefit my children i can choose to benefit that often i can choose to benefit my jojo you understand and i can choose to take care of a certain uh, charity i know you've heard that from muzungu sana sana sindi unakuta hata ameachia some dog to be taken care of <laughs> and an african looks at a dog like oh, how unachia umbo na mnakaa na watu wako but it's your choice isn't it it's within your right to do that now the other thing is you must define what is to be inherited okay you must define proper definition and that part is one of the other benefits of the will that i had not mentioned for example do your people know everything of yours maliziko maybe you even know uh unaskianga hako na shamba hiyo ya milimani kwa mfano milimani na kuru you understand or somewhere by the lakeside in Ivasha sindio but they do not know is title number what munaskianga tu and probably because you're busy uh gm just like i am uh you've never had a chance to show any of your members of the family the ground but if you write in the will you write the title number okay so that even if you had not shown them even if you had not shown them it should be easy for them to trace it you understand 
those are the benefits of a will. Uh, so you must define the 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 the, 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 the property or the, your estate. And your properties in, in succession law, we refer to what you own because it's not on, only land, it's not only cars, it's not only tangible things. You may have shares, money in the banks, you know, a proper, a, a, what do you call it, intellectual property, things like, uh, um, you know, copyright things. So that when you divide them, it's e easy for your beneficiaries to identify them, whether you're there or not. You understand? Because they are divine, isn't it? So that's, that's one benefit of the will. Now, the other agreement of the will is uh, you must have minimum two witnesses. Minimum two witnesses. I give an example of uh, GM and uh, Dr. Anna and Maria here as witness when I was giving the example of the other one. Eh? So assume that other one that I said Reduce it into writing, okay? Ingredients, the same. Then the next one is, Najua up and your kuna points in billion down be up. Those ones, muta shanga, how come? But that's the law. And there are reasons for that, isn't it? One, that will of yours, as long as you're breathing, it's not valid. See, I can hear the, the comments. <laughs> In short, your will is valid upon your last breath. Upon your death. You, got, you get that? And therefore, as long as you're breathing, if one of your sons or your daughters, or one of your wives stole it, or your husband stole it, they cannot execute it. They cannot turn it into benefits for themselves when you're valid, when you're alive. Okay? Number two, on that aspect, once uh, I mean, you can actually change your will when you're still alive. You understand? Okay? By way of uh, a, something we call a codicil. Now, that means this. Uh, I can change my mind on what I had thought of giving Maria for whatever reason. If Maria is not treating me so well, or Maria because she knows that uh, uh, the thank you very much. The the land in Emilimani has been given to her, so she's uh, somehow accelerating my death. <laughs> and it happens, it happens. If somehow she's accelerating my death, Maria, I see you on Tapatia, uh, Doctor Anna. She's been taking care of me. You know things like this. I'm just giving an example. Or two, another way of changing the will is when I was doing this will, I only owned the land in Milimani. I'm a very faithful person. I know I'm not religious, but I'm very faithful. Uh, I believe in God. I may not be a religious person. Maybe I've not even gone to church for the last eight years, but I know there is God. <laughs> so, kwa sababu ya ya matendo chache ile nafanyanga Mungu akanibariki nikapata 7000 acres in Narok na nilikuwa nimeshaandika will what am i supposed to do leave it out so i amend it so that i accommodate that sindio so i wanted to uh, i'm saying this because i'm talking to uh, uh, the, the reason i'm taking too much time on the will part is I'm talking to an educated group that must live in the current times and avoid the problems that we have seen. I have done, I have done succession in test it. In test it is a, now where there's no will. Eh? In test it, that 
I'll give an example. I know you know such family. There are big families. If you come from that family, allow me to do that because that is what we also teach within schools. Yeah? Uh, the Koinange family. The Bio Koinange family, the succession started in 1981. I was about three years old. Okay? I went to school, my primary school, my high school, my university and some or somewhere I participated in that <laughs> succession okay until it ended around 2015 yes I'm talking to you so that you understand engage as we lawyers to apange ndio msiwache mashinda kama hizo because what happens is this eh? And you can imagine how much money went into lawyers. How many? How much? A lot. One time, one time some property was sold, and the proceeds was sold to for over a billion shillings. But a, a good percentage, and when I say a good percentage, close to forty percent went into paying bills of lawyers. Now that money would have benefited the beneficiaries so lawyers become beneficiaries now the other point of the will is this do you realize that uh, there are liabilities that carry along with your estate because if your if your estate is vast it's big it carries bills isn't it taxes electric bills electricity bills and the likes it also Man, is maintained by suppliers you know service providers isn't it? now it does not necessarily translate that you have left behind responsible people isn't it now how do you take care of that you also take care of that by a will where you write down and say uh, so and so the executor say for example the case of gm and uh, the way I said I'm the executor of his will. The executor meaning I am the one who will execute the will by distributing or taking care of his estate as per his wish after he's gone. You understand? So one of the things is that uh, after I execute, during the execution process, I take care of those bills. If it was a uh, water bill for the property in Milimani Nakuru and related the person who will say for example I get used Maria if it's Maria excuse me if it's Maria who uh, takes Milimani he mu she must take it with its liabilities well stated in the will okay if uh, GM what's your name Evelyn, if you owned Evelyn some money when you're still alive, and because you are a clean man, you do not want to go away with Evelyn's 200,000 shillings, it is written there. In the event I go, I owe Evelyn this much. So Evelyn shall be sorted by a, a dispose of one of my cars, okay, to pay Evelyn. Kamau, you know, the likes, eh? Okay? So the proceeds of the following things shall be sold. You know, like, you also give such directions so that you don't leave people fighting. What shall we sell to sort the bills? So that your creditors are taken care of also through a will. Okay? Now, I want to close that part of the will. Then, uh, do I wait for questions there or I go through the entire of it? Then we can get space, save questions later, isn't it? Now, um... I want now to go to, uh, what do you call it, to the issue of, uh, that was tested succession, okay? Where you have a will. We are finished with that. We shall revisit that in the questions, isn't it? And please make it interactive, eh? So that I don't talk and talk. I'm not a lecturer. I only submit before a judge, and the judge keeps on answering me. Uh, Mr. Kamunda, uh, please uh, tell me something about that. Expound more. You understand? 
So I'm not used to lecturing a lecture hall where you keep quiet and I lecture and I lecture and I lecture. I only did that one time when, when I was a classmate of my lecturer and you were standing in front of a seat and like you. Uh, now, the intestate, that was tested, now we are talking about intested. Intested is where there's no will. It's the case like the gentleman mentioned. Now, that is what I was saying. This, one. Uh, this is a case where anybody who is of 18 years or anybody who, is, who owns property, because you know, by the in the current times, you can even, you, you know, you, you, a windfall may have come your way at 15, and it's yours, Sindio. Sasa ukienda, utasema ita kuwa succeeded, si lazima. It must benefit some people around you, and who are these people, those people, we shall be dividing them as we move on, isn't it? Now, the order is like this. For succession of a person, the beneficiaries, I'll start with dividing beneficiaries so that we pick everything else from there. Yeah? One, uh, assume in case of a, a married couple, the first person who is your beneficiary is your spouse. The reason I've used the word married couple is because uh, the society looks at it from the man's perspective only. Who said that uh, succession can be not be done by the husband from the estate of the wife? It can be done, isn't it? So for the men who are here, listen to this and listen to it carefully. It's going to benefit you uh, if fate comes your way, isn't it? In the event of a married couple, the first beneficiary is the spouse, okay? And if, for example, I pick in the case of a man, which is the most uh, classical uh, example that people know, is uh, the wife, then the children. But in the event there, is no, there are no children, then the parents, let me, let me, in that case I'll pick one person. In the event of a person, whether a woman or a man, if you go and you do not have spouse and you do not have children, your first beneficiaries are your parents. If there are no parents, siblings. The siblings and parents come almost the same point, but priority is given to parents. Okay? Then in the event there are no parents, of course, you squarely rest with the siblings. And if there are no siblings, then other relatives who must be first relatives who must prove that they are your relatives. And if there are no relatives at all, you know, at times you can get somebody here who you are neighbor, and Maria, you uh, in the HR, you're the one who who has the biography of everybody. Yes, you know Nanga Mengi. Thank you. <laughs> so, in the event you cannot trace anybody at all, okay? If you can't trace any relative at all, your estate refers to the state. Who is the state? The government. That is why, and the Attorney General's office is uh, the Department of Public Trustee, where now things go towards that direction. Because it cannot be left hanging in the air. It must go to somebody. You know, can you imagine uh, some five acres down the lake here, and we can't trace anybody. Over time, it will refer to the state. Of course, Kenyans being Kenyans, who they are, Grabbing is the order of the day. Somebody will discover that. I've seen that. Somebody will discover that. And somehow they start manufacturing things or creating funny things. Right now as we speak, as late as this week, I'm doing a case where um, this Mze did not have children. Then he lived somewhere in some estate in Nairobi. And uh, he had these properties. Then when he has 
the the client who I'm working for today is one of the of the nephews who is son to the sister to the that team there and uh, a woman who he used to have rentals so he used to live in one side of those rentals and uh, rent the others so this gentleman who is the nephew would visit him take care of him until he died so when he died when i was about to die he was also because of whatever he was suffering from he, he started losing you know memory and coordination and uh, during that time one of the women who were uh, living in his property you know people took it that she was doing it in good faith and kumbe bila namkaribia that is how she is trying to get more information about him it's like she could foresee his death she ended up saying that she was his wife she faked some marriage certificate somewhere and uh, because she, during that time when someone is ailing you can go to his house she was able to get a number of documents okay when she got those documents she even lied and faked uh, burial permits yet she never went to bury <laughs> you understand when we're discovering as you'll see in the process of succession she actually filed the petition for succession until we discovered it because it does have some a, a place where you have to do to gazette it so it was discovered that way and then it was followed and then i was given instructions to follow and undo all that that is where we are going to disclose much we you will you'll see what i'm saying in the process of the next stage of where i'm going um now how do you do succession in test it um i'll give an example again allow me gm to only use you because you spoke here and i picked a few things that you spoke for yourself <laughs> <laughs> and i'll say this again your spouse or spouses sorry you you said something i wouldn't say the other that but um your spouse if you in case you're not there the person who can petition for succession of your estate is your spouse at least must be at least two people up to four people who are petitioners to be made administrators of your estate for purpose of distribution of your estate you know for purpose of distributing maliako eh? so your spouse or spouses so if you have two uh, they are the first people together with the children so they, they they choose between themselves their mother plus either most people look at it from the first born traditionally people look at sons <laughs> okay people look at sons they pick sons to be to co-administrate with the mother you know you must have at least two administrators say so i pick that you have uh, one wife and children and i give that as an example that say your wife and probably your son or your daughter whoever they'll agree okay now once how do they do it before they do that assume you come from a village or you come from an area that has a uh what you used to call provincial administration today it goes down to the office of the chief so that sub chief chief do like that if you have a chief the chief is supposed to do for them a letter recognizing that family and saying uh, so and so left behind wife uh, so and so i don't know her name let's let's use the name susan susan and then he hand the following children uh, say tom uh, lydia like that say like say four of them then i know him he hails from this and this place okay then as you do that they also get your death certificate okay and then they also get 
the a portfolio of your estate because when you're petitioning for the you know petition for that succession for letters of uh, administration is you must also again disclose what you're inheriting from that person from the deceased okay now at that point at that point once you successively file that and it must, you see remember the, the letter of chief that i mentioned eh? it must be part of the documents accompanying death uh, certificate to demonstrate that person is indeed dead okay like that like that so all those are the requirements that you have then you file it in court nowadays before it was used to be exclusively the high court but today you can also do it in the chief magistrate court that has been given a jurisdiction to do so by the chief justice the reason for that is because cases are so many in kenya if you do it exclusively in the high court we only have uh, about the high court has less than 100 judges or they about the high court remember the high court has um, many divisions eh? we have the family division this is what we are talking about now we have uh, the civil division tax division elc division the labor division so the judges of the high court that has capacity to handle uh, succession are less than 100 in the country or they about okay so you can imagine if everybody was to be told to only file there then that's the case now they're still being filed there as also in the lower court now how are they done how do they do that i'll teach you a little of how the judiciary in a sentence how the judiciary operates uh cases are filed depending in in certain courts in from the high court to the lower court which is the magistrate court depending on the value for example if your estate was so big gm and when i look at you i see it that way <laughs> and i'll be happy one day to not no to handle your cases not that one because i want to see you around for a while um if the value of your estate is big enough like um say cumulatively it's in the tune of um, 25 million that one we take it to the high court if it's below that we take it to the chief magistrate court so that is how you separate it so that you also don't keep the the high court idle and you also keep the lower court busy the reason for that is because magistrates are so many magistrates in the country of about about 400 magistrates in the country so that we are able to handle things timely session so that you avoid those backlog you can imagine if a judge in akuro you see there's no a judge in naivasha is told to handle all the succession matters around here see utafail law it has kids six years to come you know you understand eh? so um once you file that and you've uh, the court has confirmed that um you are wife and say one of your sons say tom susan the mother and tom the son are the administrators of your estate they have to put it in the kenya gazette kenya gazette for maybe to elaborate is a is a government uh, press that um, legally is recognized as uh, once you file it there it's, it's one of the ways of gazetting the laws of kenya so it's, it's 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 a process in succession that is uh, recognized that way when you file you 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 put in the Kenya Gazette it's it's published in the Kenya Gazette that's a word it's published in the Kenya Gazette for 60 days it is assumed when something is published in the Kenya Gazette everybody should be able to access it the reason for that is this uh GM's estate may have had other interests for example like you said may have had other people who may feel they were left out and they are rightfully beneficiaries of estate unaweza kuwa wakati ulikuwa unafanya kazi kacheliba uliacha mtoto huko ukaenda you have this other place in uh, takwel ukiwa takwel iko mwingine uliacha huko there's another son or daughter you left there okay so 
If that person feels that uh, they were left out, then it's that time they can file uh, their objection or their interest in court mm. uh, declaring themselves to be beneficiaries of your estate. So the 60 days, once the 60 days lapse, for example, the one I was giving that I'm doing right now that uh, about the woman who wanted to swindle the family of uh, the deceased because they didn't know other people of the deceased, we filed an objection that uh, she's not uh, actually a beneficiary, she's not the one who is supposed to do that. I assume she was, and I'm filing it for another child that has been discovered, then I'll be saying that uh, this person need to be recognized as a beneficiary of this estate before the conclusion or the distribution of this uh, estate is done. You have understood now? So that, 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 the, the reason for gazetting it is to invite anybody who has interest. For example, uh, GM just disappeared in my life and we were doing business together and I can't trace him and I only see the, in the Gazette A. Eh, succession of GM's estate. He was me some 300,000 shillings. I can come in and say, I need to be paid by his estate. What he owed, he owed me. You understand? So all those are to attract, to give an avenue for those people to come in. People who may have been left out and who are qualified to benefit, to benefit from the estate. So by now you understand a creditor, someone you owed money or whatever you owed them, or somebody you had sold some property. In this, this is actually the common cases. Common cases are that somebody you had sold some property to, and probably by that time you are not finished transferring. Okay? Or you're not finished the transaction generally, whether by payment or by, by completion of transfer, that person is qualifying to bring it forth after seeing it in the Gazette notice. Or by no, when they know it in a different way. But mostly the legal part, the way of doing it is through the publication, the Kenya Gazette. You understand? Now, once the 60 days are over, okay? Once the 60 days are over, again, uh, and we had said that uh, a, a grant of uh, letters of administration is issued to Susan and the son. That is now the spouse and one of the children. And in this case, before I leave that point, so that I go completely to the other point, is um, assume you have more than one spouse. Okay? So, uh, we had said it must be done by at least four. So, uh, the first house is Susan and Tom. The second house is uh, pick a name. Yeah? Mary. Mary and uh, say Kamau. Okay? Kamau the son, Mary the mother. So they can pick four administrators. Susan, Tom, Mary, Kamau. And now uh, that has been done, they have been confirmed, they are administrators. You have now to wait for six months. Six months. Six months. Actually, six months count from the day you issued the letters of administration all through to the 60 days, six months in total, for you to apply for the last document. Which is this document? That's where the real challenge is. The real challenge comes when, yes, we have agreed. The two houses have agreed that uh, each house has produced two people to be part of the administrators. Now let us distribute the property. Mary wants the Bilimani property, but Susan also wants it for his children, for her children. How do you deal with that? They can't agree. They can't agree. The advantages of what uh, GM you're saying. <laughs> you can maintain one line. Maintain one line. This is where challenges come now. The, form, the family views, the family fights now come in there. Because you have Milimani 
in Nakuru and you also have Karen in Nairobi. Why do you want to throw me in uh, Nakuru? Why do you want to throw me and my children in Nakuru and do you want to take Karen or Mudaiga? You know, I'm giving those examples because those are the places that people uh, you know, look up to so much, eh? just an example. Now, you can't agree. It comes now back to something else. It goes to things like this. One, who is the first wife? Okay? Susan. When they were only Susan and DM, they acquired Karen. Okay? When they acquired Milimani is after I'm giving it as an example. It doesn't have to be that way because it may be also be an acquired at the same time or after. But just giving an example of one of the formulas that uh, is considered so that you look at it and uh, I'll expound further on that formula is if that property was acquired during the marriage of Susan and uh, the GM, GM and they had not, GM had not brought in Mary, that's one of the methods of saying this goes to Susan and his children and her children. Now, Milimani was also acquired during you see because because Mary came in, it did not take away the marriage between Susan and the GM. So it was acquired now during that marriage. Now that is this is what happens. What is considered now in distributing now Milimani is what was also their contribution towards acquiring Milimani. Suppose Susan and, uh, and the GM had a company that they were operating that was exclusively their business and uh, says Susan was living in Karen but uh, how did the uh, um, GM get uh, married probably is because he had an uh, interest in Nakuru. Say, so, for example, we are here where we are, and the probably is here. So, yes, in as much as it was bought by money from uh, the business of Susan and the uh, and the GM, then who was going to take care of it? Mary. Did she contribute or not? Did she contribute or not? No, you know, contribution may be in kind, by the way. It's not necessarily monetary. Eh? For example, when GM was going to take care of uh, workers who were taking care of that, we would be left there for a week taking care of uh, some, uh, some, some extension being built there, regardless of where the money is coming from. <laughs> so those, those factors cannot be wished away, they are considered, okay? As long as, uh, and, and you see, by this time we are already saying we are recognizing Mary as a wife, eh? Okay? But kama alikuwa tu anaka huko alimuzalia mtoto, I shall handle that, eh? I shall deal with that. A person who has a child, like for example, I was giving an example of uh, when you're in uh, Takwell, just an example. You left a child there, but you never got married to the mother. That one is usually like this. The mother cannot directly benefit from your estate. The mother will benefit through the child. So it's only the child who is qualified to benefit from your estate and not the mother. So that the apportionment shall be you know, in line with the other children. Okay? And in this case, children are equal. Children are equal. Okay? Because regardless of the mother, children are equal. This is the reason they are equal. Are they not James' children? So, for example, for the cases of where it's a wife and her children, children do not benefit through the mother. The mother is the only a definition of how they are related to 
the GM. You understand? So, but children are equal to the deceased. Tuko pamoja. Now, in case of a will now, it also comes in, in the earlier part we were, in case of a will, the, the, the GM may have decided this is how they will be given. That is undisputable. So that, kuneza kuwa, by the way, and it happens. It happens. I'll give an example of, uh, assume Obama's father was alive, was, uh, alive uh, uh, then left at a time, like say, a few years back when Obama was the person he is. Okay? And during those last days, uh, and assuming the father never got married to Obama's mother, okay? But the father, the children here in Kenya, one, I took you to school, but Mukakua drunkards, you don't take care of me. I'm hailing here, you don't take care of me. Obama is coming from US to come and take care of me. Nani mtoto wa uko, wakambo uko. You know, the child out of wedlock. That's the definition of that child. A child out of wedlock. Assume he, being a child of that wedlock is the one who took care of the father to the end. And the father decides, I will bless you with my home in Mothaiga. In a will. Walevi yata mukipika kelele na mnagani, shaurienu. That is the law. It is, you cannot dispute that part of the will. We have seen big families, now I won't mention names, where the father who was ailing was even being seen in the news in some window trying to talk to the press. <laughs> And eventually, die and, you, and people started pull and push. The guy is a billionaire. They pull and push. Being taken, South Africa's view, where, where, is he, he had money. But then at times, that money is not coming out because he's being blocked by his own children and uh, women. And how would you interpret that, that they did not accelerate the father's death? Okay? Then probably this one, this daughter, or this is son, who is really fighting with the other so that he can take care of the medical aspect of the father to the death. Then Mzee decides, giving an example, I don't know if that's what he did or not, decides, you know what? A certain building, X in town, shall belong to Maria. Maria stood with me to my last breath. Or, or of course, you can't not have written it before the death, but, uh, you know, they could see the effort. All this time, any time I needed help, Maria would come through. Who are those guys? <laughs> now that's what I wanted. Attention, please. <laughs> yes. So, um, if 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 uh, so, that Muse says Maria, uh, the building in town. And he, uh, then he writes it in, uh, he puts it in writing in a valid will. All the wistrels who are waiting for me to die, who have even been uh, uh, converting my titles unknowingly. You know, those things happen in those big estates where people have so much property. You find, uh, uh, I took you to school, but you think I have properties. You just, because you have seen that. Eh? You've, those, you've seen those in families. Those are called wistrels, and, and the law actually talks about them. Wistrels can be disinherited. Yes, they can. How are they disinherited? For example, uh, during the pendency of succession, uh, what was your name again? Eh? Evelyn. Evelyn decides to go behind the back, use some mukora, converted some two acres by the lakeside, and sold it at date the money. And you had your life all the way to Brazil and Rio and all that. We're only seeing you on TV having good life for money you've not worked for. If we can prove that, we can actually disinherit you in the succession. We had you, you already ate your share. So, if you meddle with the estate of the deceased before succession is complete, 
it's illegal, it's unlawful, it can cost you your share in the estate. You understand? And the judge can decide to punish you eh? and say, by the way, even when people are getting quarters, that you got was a fifth because of your ill motive to shake an eye. And you'll be seeing your siblings wagekula maisha as you drink in the in the network of Ibanda uko. You understand? Eh? So so those those are the things um um I'll be talking about. So we we were at uh, now we have gone through the process. Six months are over. I was at what are we supposed to do? We have agreed. Susan and uh, the children take the Mothaigo is it the current home? And uh, Mary takes part of Milimani. Okay. And because it is a house, Mwezi Katanisha Nanusu, you know, what you do is you agree we dispose it of and the proceeds of sale shall be distributed in this ratio. Remember we talked about proof of contribution. And the contribution doesn't mean monetary. Eh? It also in kind and other things. For example, during the time that uh, GM was getting uh, Milimani and they was managing Milimani and they were having Mary, probably it's during that time there was, it, there was fire and hell in Karen. There was no peace. He was taking care of GM that time. Mary. Susan Nakwapa Kizema Mindian Lipeleka Ngombe Kwanza. But did those cows take care of GM? Eh? Did they? And probably, by the way, the way, the way, the way Mary got married to Jim was attack uh, wenda kwa sana sana kwa baba ya Mary kwa sabu wa wakukua. Alienda tu anangu who is even your friend. Or, <laughs> or the mother. Na ukapeleka sukari na a band of something. Na, and you are recognized as such as the husband to Mary. Na Zayo, Susan was uh, hey, the convoy that had gone to Akina Susan's place <laughs> and some helicopters landed there. <laughs> it's not about the flamboyancy, it's the recognition of the deeds. You know, the, some rituals were done. The reason I'm mentioning that is who is a wife? That question will come to be at some point. Eh? After I finish this. So you have agreed Milimani will be distributed this way. So now you are. After six months, you apply what you call summons for confirmation of grant in the court. Confirmation of grant lists down um, the mode of distribution of uh, the property of the estate of uh, GM in the manner that now we have talked about. For example, uh, the Ridge Rover color blue goes to Susan. The Ridge Rover color gray goes to Mary. I'm wishing you good things, so, GM. Uh, goes to Mary and like that, like that. Uh, my bicycle that uh, I usually ride to do my exercise goes to my daughter Eve, eh? Evelyn, like that. I'm also wishing you something good. So um, that once that is confirmed by the court and the court calls during that time, when that is being done, on the day that the court is putting a signature on that, everybody, the administrators to all the beneficiaries, beneficiaries listed must be in court. Because it is the end of the feud. It is the end of the disagreements to an agreement. Okay? They must be there. Susan, after, after it's read through, uh, have you agreed that uh, the land in uh, Narok, 7,000 acres, been distributed between yourself and Mary in equal terms? 
Yes. Yes. Uh, Tom, is that so? Uh, Kamau, is that so? You know, those I mentioned were, been, were administrators. So let's go to other children. Evelyn, is that so? Like that, eh? all the way with their 10, all of them, each must confirm they agree to that. Okay? We go like that to all the properties. All the properties. Any aspect of property, any aspect of the estate. I defined it as uh, meaning so many things, some of them which are intangible, isn't it? So, that is done. In the event, let's go back. They have not agreed. They have not agreed. What do we do there? This is what we do. Uh, by this time, you obviously know the house A, Susan, house B, Mary, is represented by their lawyers differently, different lawyers, isn't it? And each person has their reason why they believe eh, that they should get this or that, isn't it? The issue of contribution, the issue of uh, I am the one who took care of this, I am the one who did that, I am the one who was this, you know, all that. They file the affidavits and then their lawyers, the affidavits now is Mary saying, this is the reason I believe I must have a share in uh, Modaiga. In as much as I was not there when it was bought. This is why I believe that uh, I owe, I'm the one who got the entire of Milimani. You understand? Then there are lawyers file what you call submissions. Uh, but before submissions, at times, if they do not agree completely with what uh, is in uh, the affidavits, they may want to come and defend in the court. As in Guinea, human beings, until you speak of your case, you don't feel like you have done anything. And that time you have said a lot in your affidavit. You know, I'm saying this out of experience. I've seen cases where uh, you tell a client, by the way, what you said in uh, the affidavit is sufficient. You don't need to come to court to be cross-examined, blah, 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 and all that. Eh? So we do it by what you call viva force evidence. Viva force evidence is where come and defend your part in court. Okay? So we put Mary there. Uh, she says her part. We put uh, Susan there. She says her part. She asks questions. And then after that, we do submissions. Submissions is now legal argument. If I am representing Susan, I'll be telling the court, arguing legal, court, quoting case law. This is what happened in the case of the Otieno. What is the, that case of uh, Wamboy Otieno? Yes. You know, yes. <laughs> those cases. I, I quote all those man of cases, the circumstances were like this, and this is what the court decided when it was taken to the court of appeal. This is what the judges found, they reasoned like this. You know, you 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 argue all those for your client. We argue, we argue, we argue, and then we leave to the judge, and the judge comes and makes a decision. What the judge decides, what the judge decides at that point is the final mode of distribution. If it's in the high court and you're not satisfied, you go to the court of appeal. So now, let me go back to where they had agreed and I and I join it now with that one. Eh? If you had agreed, a certificate of confirmation of grant comes out, giving uh, you know, a schedule, a schedule of how the estate is being distributed. Okay? This goes to what goes to that. You see, firstly, you agreed, okay? So it, you can't challenge what you agreed. A judgment that is arrived from a consent or people have agreed cannot be challenged. It's actually, it's like a contract. You can't deny contract. You signed it for voluntarily and will, isn't it? But now, if it's a judgment by the judge now who says, the reason given by, by Susan, I think she, 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 is equitable beneficiary of uh, the current, okay? And now, the proceeds in Milimani should be distributed this way because uh, Mary partially contributed, okay? And uh, the those proceeds also benefit John, who was a child left in Tuckwell. Remember, I had mentioned all that, eh? I'll mention those examples that you join hands now and see all the aspects of succession do they cover. 
And the part of that uh, proceeds of Milimani sale, there's 200 of Evelyn. UGM owned 200,000. Are we, are we moving now? Are, are you getting the picture of why I brought all of them now, joined them together? So either what they agreed and they told the court we have agreed this way, or the court has also decided because they disagreed, the court has decided it's equal. What they agreed, it signed as a court order, and what you call a, a certificate of conversion grant is given that is a sh the, the legal schedule of the distribution that is what you use now to go to the registrar of lands and transfer the title now from gm say to susan or to tom or to whoever you know and that is also what you use to go to kcb and say the shares the ten thousand shares are is going to say at peter or come out whoever it is your sons or your daughter you understand? So that is a legal document now, and it's a final document that you use to go to uh, either, uh, or, I mean, um, to, to process a transfer of whichever interest that is going to you, whatever benefit is going to you. You understand? If it's money in the bank, that is also what you take to the bank, because probably it said, uh, because Jen and uh, and uh, Phineas here uh, were still in college. Uh, the money in uh, CB, whatever bank, family bank, uh, will go into the education. Okay, so it is open to do that way. So, in a general view, that is what until succession. I'll only touch a few things as I close and I open for the open now, open forum for questions. I'll say this. Uh, at times, at times, Susan and Mary may have been uh, housewives. So, when the GM is not there, the day-to-day -day running of uh, Things, for example, paying of bills, taking care of uh, probably uh, his final rights and all that, if they don't have money of their own. Or probably when they sick, children are in school, they are not able to take care of that, but there's a lot of money in the bank. Will you wait until the succession process is over so that you can get money in the bank and take children to school? Suppose it takes like three years. How do you go about that? That's a question I know, uh, Maria, you have also faced them in your department where spouses have come or wives of uh, people are deceased or the windows of the, the, your, 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 your former employees have come and they're telling you, we really, really need the money to take children to school. And your hands are tied because Susan and Mary have come. And the declaration here is Susan or Mary. And now, I say it's Susan, and Mary has come. And now, even if it was Susan, but also Mary has also declared herself, what do you do? And because Mary knows, uh, if I'm not careful, he has cons she has consulted a lawyer, and lawyers went to the court and uh, came with an injunction telling uh, Maria, you know what? You can't release that money to anyone. What do you do? Are those children supposed to stay in home without going to school or without eating? This is what happens. There's something called limited uh, letters of administration or limited grants. What is that? It is pending uh, the final determination, the final uh, grant, letters of administration, you can apply for a limited grant for a specific objective. For example, for school fees, for medical bill, for giving examples of uh, things that are urgent that cannot wait to the end. Okay? There, you say, uh, children, school fees, 
and the maintenance of certain aspects of the estate of the deceased cannot wait the end of uh, you know the succession process so grant has an order to access money in account x in kcb for purposes of taking care of a certain aspect for example the school fees i've given those examples eh? the ones which are urgent that that cannot wait okay so uh those are some of the aspects of uh, limited grants those are terms you'll find uh as as you go ahead then uh i think i've given an example that carries along or the uh, most of the aspects of uh, succession that uh, involves uh, monogamous marriage i've covered that is it i've covered the uh, cases of uh, polygamous marriages I've mentioned John in Tuckwell who was left there. I've covered a child out of wedlock. What have I not covered? Let me see. <laughs> yeah, polygamy is more than two wives. Yeah. 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 Or if you have six. <laughs> Now, if you are an akuku danger, if you are an akuku danger, I'm sure when I say akuku danger, he was a man who was, uh, uh, most of you must know a guy who was called akuku danger, isn't you? I hope uh, none of you is a descendant of akuku danger. Uh, that is an exception case. Uh, the law, in as much as it is, uh, two to four then that case must be specifically as a peculiar case be brought to court because you know the law of succession I'll, I'll tell you this the law of succession is a development that is english intertwined with african traditional cultures remember and it's good you have asked me that gm because there's an aspect i'd left out that i intended to talk about that uh, when I was talking about equality. Firstly, the law of succession does not talk of man or woman. It recognizes a person without gender divination. Yes, there's no gender divination in law of succession. It recognizes a human being. So therefore, the equality of gender is taken care of in the law of succession and it takes it from uh, uh, the constitution okay because the constitution treats every person equally and when the constitution has an article for example i'll quote for you an article in the constitution that uh, defines uh, that equality just a moment I'll get it as gone. So uh, I think uh, is it 27 or say about article 27. Yeah, basically uh, it has not. It does not give um, weight to any gender. It, it equalizes the gender. Okay. Now that is where uh, the aspect I'd forgotten, and it's good uh, that has come in, is the constitution in that recognition also recognizes the woman the women aspect in uh, succession this way every child is a beneficiary of his father or mother's estate equally i need to do that because we are moving from the practice of the traditional practices where we would say when a woman is married it is assumed that they, are, they will benefit from where they are married from uh, married to okay and uh, for that reason and i've done cases one of which i concluded uh, a few weeks ago where my client was one of the sons and uh, this is the difficulty of doing cases where 
uh, the people who are beneficiaries because of those feuds, they took too long to succeed their fathers and they are doing it when they're in their 70s. When they are doing it in their 70s, yes, 70s, so that they believe, for example, assume uh, your brothers and sisters, uh, GM, uh, Daktari and uh, Maria here, and uh, you, in, your, in your 70s, you believe actually you're the sole heir of your father's estate. And you start arguing that your clan, clan X, the traditions were like the following. Uh, once a woman is married, and now because they are married, they are not supposed to benefit from the estate of my father. So it is, I'm exclusive, you are born three of you. The constitution says this. Because of that equality, because of that article on equality, it says, any traditional practice, any customary law, any law, other law, even written law, that contravenes provisions of the constitution, okay, is, and is repugnant to that uh, provision of the constitution, okay, is nullified by operation of that article of the constitution to the extent of that repugnancy, okay? Meaning, <laughs> if there was a, a law that says that uh, uh, Maria is married, if your traditions now, if you assume your brothers and sisters, it says that your traditions say that uh, you cannot inherit your father, and the constitution and the law of succession says so, then that law, that customary law, is null and void to the extent, and it's actually to the extent of that part. You understand, people? <laughs> we, 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 we are at different stages of development of uh, our society, and you realize that uh, uh, we come from different backgrounds where, uh, assume, I mean, allow me to use, the, say, the Maasai community. I have nothing against the Maasai. They are beautiful people. They are good people. So for those who are Maasai, I have nothing against them. I'm using it as an example because, uh, you know, the aspects of development, society development. You you find that uh, if somebody, for example, is married in a Ngombe Zililetwa and all that, eh? and to date, Men and women there believe that uh, since Ulienda, uh, you, you, you hail from Kajendo and uh, you married in like Kipia, the areas that are uh, occupied by your brothers, the, the Maya community, and they believe that uh, since you went to like Kipia, then forget about any interest in uh, Kajendo. Luckily, as you continued practicing the traditions, uh, you're lucky you're taken to school and went to like keep here, you advanced it, and now you have the knowledge and you work in Kenjin and Mr. Kamunda passed by and he talked about it and now you realize, wait a moment, my, my, my brothers are there, you know, jumping high and saying, oh, the 2,000 acres in his head to Tachunga And then you wake up right now and you go to court and say, wait a moment, where is my share? Now you know where to start. You have understood the example I've given. So that even today, if you didn't know that and you probably come from such a background, feel free. Amir, come, we shall get those, <laughs> those acres for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm using it as an example that truly the constitution recognizes that gender equality to that extent, to the extent of rubbishing the traditions as long as they are repugnant to the constitution. You understand? And to written law. So that, now, if the constitution, why the constitution comes first is because uh, when we were doing uh, constitution law, we used to use very heavy terms. 
that I will use. Maybe you can not sit down and you can look at it later. The constitution is a grad norm. Grad norm meaning is a, is a law that uh, is a overall law that governs a society. In this case, the society is the Kenyan Kenya law. Our, our 2010 constitution changed a lot. It is that which recognizes that gender equality in clear words, okay, in very clear words. And it has really supported the pink energy in its own way. And that is why today the pink energy has been energized this much. They can organize such an event. And uh, you know what, men? See, green, <laughs> is it green? Blue energy. Blue energy is the courtesy of pink energy, right? Pull up your socks, GM, and, <laughs> and the likes. So, um, for the uh, for for the question that uh, that the issue you raised, um, GM, uh, the position is that uh, all those people will be recognized. All that needed to be done is be brought forth to the court, so that the court exempts that rule of uh, maximum four. As administrators, because if if uh, the houses are not uh, fighting and they can't agree, or house A, B, C, D up to say one to ten, if house nine cannot trust the other houses, and probably uh, you know the order of authority in uh, in those arrangements is the order of marriages, isn't it? So it may, it may interpret that uh, the authority ends at uh, number four. So. If you don't trust each other, that needs to be brought to the court, and the court takes note of that and exempts that. Remember, it's the high court. It has power to, to uh, interpret the law and also do as it deems fit. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention and for listening to me. I am open to your questions. Okay, thank you so much. That's quite an enlightenment. I am, I am so excited and empowered. Thank you so much. Um, I think we go directly to the questions. I will ask our MC um, to take the mic and go to the individual people. I can see a question right there at the back. Um, so we're gonna have one, two, any other question? Okay, so I think I'll point out and then she'll take the mic. Can we have uh, every maybe two so that I don't lose the... Yes. Yes. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my question is about my own experience. My father died before, no, my mother died before my father. Then my mother had, to, my father had to marry another woman. And then shortly later, my father also died. And uh, my stepmother remained as a young woman. Then, years later, my stepmother had a child, a male one for that matter. Then, uh, later on, issues started cropping in as my other brother, my brothers from my father's first wife started claiming that my the son that my stepmother had after my father's death had no right to the inheritance. So I'd like you to maybe shed some light on this. Maybe uh, does this boy who is my stepmother's son out of that other man have the right to the inheritance of my father's property 
or he has inherit he will have inter inheritance from his father that's the question that, that, that sounds like he has touched a number of uh, people can i can i deal with it yes. can i yes. it looks like it has really touched quite a number of you uh, give me a moment i allow gm to leave Yes, this is a quite uh, interesting scenario. Quite interesting. <laughs> your mother passed on before your father, and then your father got married to your stepmother, and uh, in that succession, your ma your dad followed your mother, and they, they left a young stepmother who had a child that was not your father's oh, in short you can't even call him your stepbrother you know why i'm saying in short you can't call him your stepbrother is because there's the head the neck the head is the father the neck is the mother or the mothers okay and the children are so these children must be part of the head isn't it because they are products of uh, the head and the neck is that a good example so now how do you qualify to inherit the head you must have come through the neck from the head so legally speaking that child is not a beneficiary of your father's estate let me finish well, you see i had not finished i have already defined that i wanted to say uh, to give a rider to that maybe that rider will answer that aspect that child can only benefit from the share of the mother from from the the distribution of your father's estate so and that goes to this aspect also and uh, i'm picking it as a, a a bit longer topic kidogo because it's, it's probably it's, it's your day to day to benefit from that is in the event and this is what it says for example and the, the law of succession takes care of so many things for example in the event uh, uh, a spouse say say a uh, husband dies uh, when the children are young and they are not capable of uh, you know inheriting say like for example uh, having land transferred to themselves eh? what happens is this the mother holds in trust for those children until they are 18 years of age in the event and and also the mother is also one of the beneficiaries but in the event the mother gets married to another man they automatically lose the right to benefit from the estate of the husband's estate sorry no 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 you see if you mix questions i would like once i answer one question we spend so that uh, we don't open you know you will create confusion that you lose yourselves within it eh? so so let's be picking a point by point to the end eh? okay so that and this is uh, because of the following the reason you lose that uh, that uh, right is this remember any spouse is a rightful beneficiary of the estate of the other spouse regardless of gender okay now you've gotten a new husband 
and this is the the estate of your former husband or your deceased husband now again you go and you have taken everything from your husband which is supposed to go to your children or even benefit to you the parents of uh, your 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 husband and this guy intentionally got married to you looking at that who told you he can't even kill you to get that you've understood now the reasoning behind that it means it can it, it mean if he objectively came into that marriage he can actually so that now he gets that what is the security of your children that you had with your deceased husband where is the security so that clause is so so that it benefits the it protects the children and vice versa and vice versa remember i said this is no gender so when i say the wife i used it as a, a it, because i picked that line from her question eh? the vice versa is the same that uh, in the event your wife went like just like um, the case of your mother i think your your, your question has all those uh, aspects eh? let's assume there was no case of your stepmother now we are ahead the case of your mother and her mother. now uh, actually it's actually the case of your stepmother so like um, the way your mother your, your mother went before your father okay if the estate the big aspect of the estate was your mother's okay and the you know your your stepmother comes in at that time at that time your father is excluded from benefiting from your mother's estate for as long as he's now he has married again for purposes of protecting the children it's vice versa is the same have i answered the queries that were raising issues have i answered okay so so that uh, um i've forgotten your name dorothy so that dorothy uh firstly i have answered the question that uh, he, that young man can only benefit through the share of the stepmother of your stepmother of the mother that is okay uh, another question good morning everyone i my landed friend talked about uh, when you are writing a will you will be you should be of sound mind i don't know to what extent you mean sound mind because I've I've uh, learned some will are written out of uh, I don't know somebody's disgruntled because of the chaos in the house so it's not even writing the will like uh, with some love but is frustrated so is that being out of <laughs> sound mind and uh, also you talked about uh, a drunkard person selling part of the family estate. If let's say my father had a big building of billions and this drunkard has sold it. So you said that is his portion. What will happen to the rest? Something I'd written down that uh, something I'd written down uh, regarding that part of the will, but I'll, I'll answer it. Firstly, sound mind is uh, one aspect. The only part I didn't mention is that uh, you cannot do a will under duress. Like uh, your people cannot put a gun on your head to put. Uh, I mean, to put down what you're going to give to them. It means that is a, an example of what you're talking about. Sudden pressure. 
if you can demonstrate if it can be demonstrated that this will was done under duress under some influence you know under some pressure so it was not out of free will for example if under sun and this guy is determined he has wajakoyad so much that uh, <laughs> that he, he is telling him muze by the way ni uniandikie hii ama ni nikumalize okay and somebody saw him do that and they said that after i have gone that will is automatically invalid null and void to that extent it is not valid at all because it was done under duress i had a reason to save my head from this madman who is my son so that action of pressure anything that it can show that i did not do it out of my free will automatically invalidates that document is that answering your question now that is another issue that is that is a case for that time uh because it's a matter of evidence for example uh you held a gun on me so that you can acquire by force the property by lakeside here okay and then either your mother was there or you one of your of the children okay and then i've gone for example you know the guy may decide so that i'll never talk about it again after that he kills me remember the will must have uh, the certain uh, aspects in it one uh, uh beyond uh, beyond uh, you know beyond that aspect of the pressure under being under pressure or being of sound mind is the issue of witnesses okay how will you get witnesses if you if you got you made me sign it by duress because you're holding a gun on me how will it meet the other requirements because again there must be an executor executor must have been present the person who will execute that will must have been present when that is happening you see it, it still can't be a complete will because you cannot force me to write a will alone when you are alone you understand because the, it, i must nominate an executor who will make sure you have that land you understand now so it it will lack those ingredients that will complete it as a will so it cannot be a, a will so because uh, the witness must be there the executor must be there seeing me so they must be there saying that we actually so of his free will giving a certain property to so and so have i answered that now is it now that the the aspect of evidence now comes in and it's concluded in that way it was another question you asked what was it kindly remind me now uh the law on land the the law on land or title to land is an aspect that you cannot avoid when you're doing the law of succession and that part of law or that uh, part of the uh, of, of 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 the law uh, that land law Uh, 2012 laws of kenya as being amended and repealed every day but it has one particular aspect that says or that particular provision that says this you cannot pass title to that which is not yours was it his at the time he sold it no it is invalid to the extent that it belonged to the deceased and the the succession process had not been done 
So it means even if he did ukarabat with our Korahs who bought from him, it is invalid to the extent that it was sold by a person who had no capacity to sell. Until it is distributed to you, you have no capacity to sell it. It means you can go to court, invalidate that sale, and bring it back to the estate. However much it has changed hands, even if it has changed hands after that to 10 new people, as long as the first sale, that first sale was invalid, you, it is, remains invalid, regardless of how many times it has changed title. What does that mean? I've seen people, let me, you know, if I don't expound, I love 12 questions, right? If I don't expound, and I'm seeing when I expound, I'm having fewer hands, isn't it? Now, this means this. As long as, and this, I wasn't to give you the, I wanted to give you this example. In your karma for enriching yourself and expanding your estate and expanding your your property ownership, eh? I've seen people. Uh, you know, when, when people ha want to carry on succession and they, they, they own vast land, but at the time, like the example I gave that uh, probably the father was the breadwinner, the only person who had liquid money. So people are unable to carry on succession process because they have no funds to finance the process. That happens, isn't it? So what happens, uh, what's your name again? Agnes. Agnes works for Kenjin. She can afford to go in the village, you know. If Agnes, if you finance the process of succession, you pay Kamunda, he does this for us. Uh, one, okay, first of all, it starts like this. Bring us a lawyer, pay him who can do this, and then we shall give you two acres. It starts with very good intention. And then, in the process, this one person who approached you, then you come and listen to them, you listen to them, and uh, you say, okay, why should I pay a lawyer? See, I can take advantage of you guys. Then uh, you go to Evelyn. Then Evelyn, Evelyn by the way, she strike a deal with Evelyn and uh, because kuna, there's a brother of uh, Evelyn who is a kitchen. Who, who, uh, this one can deliver poor things, so bring him on board. So the family has about eight people. You conspire with Evelyn. Doc Dogo, uh, you fake some uh, grant somewhere. You fake it, and they transfer to you that building. And then, when these other people are, and, and you, you realize such cases, you're always financing them to, to frustrate uh, the beginning of succession, the, the commencement of succession by the rest of the family members. But with the time, they'll catch up with you. They'll find that uh, somebody will be ready to volunteer. Now they go to another Kamunda now who is ready to, hey, let me help these people. And truly I come in and uh, I say, okay, this is what happened. Now, you see, we don't know you transferred it. So we are using a copy of the title that we had from the beginning. So we still think it is, still belongs to our father. So we file. We conclude. And now we are going to execute the certificate of grant that says that um, we sell this uh, building because you cannot kata kata it, you cannot divide it because it's a one thing and we are, we are eight and probably we are not willing. Of course, by now you know we are not to do business with Akina Evelyn, we are already fighting. So we are going to sell it. Hey. See, you've, you've gotten uh, someone to buy or you actually, since you don't want to go through the process of changing the title, then you sell it again. So you go straight to selling. Confidently, Maria is interested. She can copy of title, go carry out search. We thought it was Kamau's building. 
he is actually Kenodia's building. How did Kenodia get it? Now Kenodia is there, up in arms, welding a very sharp, uh, shiny sword. Eh, guza maliangu, you know. <laughs> I bought it. Kwanza, the, what is welding, what I mean by the very shiny sword, is he uh, has a title, he has a sale agreement. Very good ones. Very good. But now, how did you get it? You know, I bought it. Even uh, they gave me, uh, you know, a confirmed grant here. I confirmed it is there. Probably I did what I did. and I, No, Karabati too, and I got it. The fact that it was an invalid process that gave Evelyn and uh, his brother Tom, they lied that uh, they were the only beneficiaries family members of uh, Mr. Kamau, okay? And now you've come out first. They may have decided Kwenu in Akuru and they went to Kajiando and quickly up of Majesty Court. Tuk, tuk, tuk. They passed it, they bribed. And now the rest of the family members come out. You can actually apply to invalidate that you know to to revoke it's called revoking the word we use is a, to revoke that fake grant they got if that grant is revoked any other process that followed after that kino dia shauriako when ta ukatafuta pesa yako kwa kina evelyn and tom the law is that powerful the law is that powerful. So with that, we shall invalidate all that. We shall have, and now the, we go to ELC. After that, after invalidating that, using that uh, revoked uh, grant, we go to the ELC court, Environmental Law Court, so that the judge can revoke Kenodia's title. Once that title is nullified, it reverts to the estate of Kamau. It reverts to the state of Kamau, and now we are back to square one. Okay? Now, what has happened here? You have to go into hiding with your brother Tom because Kenodia will kill you, you can be sure. You have nothing to give. You used to only eating from your father's plate. He's no longer there. You've been caught. Okay? By the time you're doing that, because... Do, do you know, it's naturally there. That money that you've ujaswetia, you can't use it well. There's no you can use it well. Most likely, if you never bought even a caplot. Eh? You went around the world. Most, most people, by the way, most people who get uh, things that we mostly don't, don't invest anywhere. So anyway, that's like another case. But the point is, it can be referred back to the, your father's estate, and you can now inherit it afresh. Regardless, even if you can only sold it to Kipchoge. And Kipchoge and sold it to uh, somebody else. You understand? And say an Omondi some. That initial one. Okay? That initial invalidation. That revocation of that uh, grant that they used. Gives you the power to recover. So Kenodia may decide, and I see, I usually see it happening. Kenodia may decide, hey, you guys come. So instead of revoking it, see now Munuzia Vizuri. You understand? Either way, that title will still be revoked, nullified until now he gets uh, the proper. Because again, you also cannot sell to him until you complete the process of succession. You must have that legal capacity to pass it on. Remember, the succession process only passes to the beneficiaries. You also cannot do the shortcut. You understand? I've seen people where 
you want to do it. no it must be it must go through that legal process you understand it must go to you so that you get the legal capacity but at the time with a consent in court but succession uh, petition must be filed and uh, administrators appointed say like your your mother and maybe your husband or yourself or with somebody else among your children then with a consent you can consent that uh, it refers to them so that they transfer direct to Kinodia. you understand but that process must be followed to the letter have i dropped some hands and left uh, some up okay it's your day okay uh I think I have two questions. Uh, one, you've clarified, but uh, to some extent, I'm not satisfied. Uh, uh, that, that the one you are you are talking about. So uh, the question is, what if now the father had the title deed, and uh, he decided because he had two wives, and uh, he decided that maybe they had wrangled with the first wife, and he decided that. He's now in the second, uh, the second uh, wife's house, and he divides the uh, the land to the second wife, and the land for the first wife, which was supposed to be the first wife's land, he decides to give it to to sell it to another person and give that person the title deed, the ideal title deed, and the, he gives also the title deed for the second wife. So how do, can these people uh, claim back the land because? Oh, okay, this person who has been sold for the land is threatening to send away the, the children who had already settled in that land away from the land because the land now belongs to him, according to the laws, because he has the, the title deed. So, is this man who had been sold the land, is he have, is, does he have that right to send these people away from the land? Let me answer that. Let me answer that. Uh, before you, just sit down. And uh, I want to answer it this way. We are talking about the law of succession. The law of succession uh, takes effect upon death of a person. The law of succession does not invalidate actions done by the deceased willfully before his death. Uh, you have talked about uh, that... Uh, the sale, the sale you've talked about was done actually by your father. You understand? It was done by your father. When he, when he was alive. He sold his property when he was when he was the remnants of what he had not sold. Before I mean, uh, before he died, is what is subject of succession. Because it was his property exclusively, rightfully, as long as he's blinking and breathing, with all the rights under uh, Article sixty four of the Constitution. You understand? It is like this. It's like saying this. Oh, assume actually your father was into business of uh, acquiring and uh, speculating on the properties and selling. Sindio? It's like saying this. All the businesses he did when he was alive, as long as uh, those lands were in his name, they ought to have been ours. So, we go and refoc all the things that he did before his death. Are you saying he had no right? Because if you, if you, if I want you to note down because all, all of you can tell you have smartphones. Go and look for Article 64 of the Constitution on right to land. It, has, it gives you exclusivity to dealing with it. If your father today, who is alive, decides to sell that land, 
you jump, you go up, there's nothing you can do. But now, it has a different aspect of it. And since we are not coming to talk about it, I'll only mention it in a sentence, and let's not go question that direction. Let's remain to confine ourselves to succession. Cindy? Cindy? So that uh, Daktari, the day people want another topic, I can come in. And uh, I'm not complaining about it, I'm just saying, I'm sure you had planned up to a certain time. Cindy? So now, this is what happens. The reason why uh, the law today requires that if I am selling a property, I must have a um, spousal consent is looking into the future. And one of the future is what you're talking about, my brother. And I think he had not finished his questions. Eh? Uh, he's looking to the future. This way. You know, at times, like for example, uh, you know, when our, when our mothers were getting married to our fathers, I don't know they still so today, is that uh, they were very submissive. Walikuwa napenda na moja. I'm serious because you asked me how how you wake up one day, go remove your father's name in your ID and put another person's name. Is that not to kupenda na moja? <laughs> eh? So what, this is what they would do. They would do that. And on if a person can do that, it means he can contribute to the purchase price and still allow you to register that property exclusively in your name. I have done cases that go to that extent. That's how I got to know that and I strongly see that. Okay? And what happens there? Because of uh, the practices that we have seen in the society, then it has developed to the extent that uh, uh, people who sell their properties that are family properties in all those aspects, using all those uh, aspects. And Kukula Maisha Brazil. I'm in Brazil. Brazil yet to near Mombasa, Cindy. Okay? And then I'm after Fatuma. Wanakula. But the next thing, the money I lose you and answer Kuondo. Cindy. So to prevent that or to protect the families from that requires muse ebukuja bring your wife and if your children are grown ups also bring them they must uh, come and tell us you know the board eh? the the lands uh, dance board eh? where you get the consent isn't it? they must come here and give spouse of consent is most necessary but if you come with your family it becomes even more valid eh? So that aspect of uh, transfer of land. For example, uh, my brother. If when you investigate that sale and to find that uh, those aspects were met, those requirements were met, the spousal consent and all that, there's nothing you can do. It means it was a valid sale. If you find there was no consent from the land control board, you have some aspect of challenging it as an invalid sale because there's no land control would consent. But that is a very hot topic. <laughs> it's a topic for another day. Uh, I would request you answer me. Have I said something to your question? Can I allow him to complete his question because he had not completed and uh, and this is the, the pink energy is carrying the blue energy today. I benefit from it, my brother. I'm not ignoring the others. Eh? Okay, uh, the, next, the next question, I think uh, that one is now kept for another day. Uh, God willing, we'll tackle that. So the next question is... Uh, uh, you, uh, there was a father, and uh, he decided to marry the first wife. Then he married the second wife. 
Now, in the process, uh, the first wife we married uh, rightfully, and the, he followed all the procedures that uh, the community may require, all the cost, the, according to the customs. So, uh, the second wife, he married, but he did not follow the procedure. As you, as, as you have said, uh, maybe you've gone to the father and uh, the mother or the uncle and talked to them, and they agreed, now you are married. You see, it was not that kind of... Uh, uh, the official marriage, and then the lady had got two uh, two children, and uh, I, it, it did not last uh, that long with the the lady, and he died. So I'm asking, does the two children serve the exact right that the other children of the first wife serve? Do you know I'm realizing this? Eh? People have a lot. They have a lot to understand beyond the, 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 the talk now. They have a lot. And uh, allow me to go on and on. Eh? Allow me to go on and on, isn't it? Thank you. Now, you, 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 the, 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 the part that you're questioning is the validity of the first marriage. No, no, I think you said something like this. If I understood, if I am wrong, you correct me, my brother. Eh? The way I understood you is that uh, a man, first uh, wife, you called her wife, but you said he went to the second. Uh, Wife is one week he did all those uh, rights. Is this the way around? Oh, the first wife is the good wife. Like, can we use the good wife to conclude that uh, he was uh, done that way? Now, this second uh, wife is the one who died, but uh, you could not trace the goats. Is that so? With no goats, you couldn't trace the goats. Now, uh, whether you could trace the goats or not, I'll start with that, then I go to the goats. Okay? Uh, with or without the goats, are these children Mr. Kamau's children? Are children equal? Then if they are equal, they should they should inherit Oh, the mother came with them, and uh, there are no goods paid. Uh, they are, they, they, then the issue of, uh, I think I was, I don't know whether I was being disrupted. I missed that. If she came with them, section, I'm trying to remember the sections I say in the, the law of succession, in the act, eh, that says this, did the deceased recognize them as his children? If we did recognize them as his children. You see, those are questions. L listen, listen. Um, my good people, the pink, the pink uh, movement and, uh, and the blue. I know there's a... I, I know there's serious disparity in the reasoning between the pink and the blue in that course. That one I know for sure, right? I know for sure, for sure, for sure. But I want you to listen to me. Uh, you know, I, I realize that uh, if I must expound a point and look at it in all aspects so that you understand it. One. First, if this second person, this second woman, uh, lived, cohabited with this man and the society recognized her as a wife. And cohabiting, cohabiting under the current law, under the Marriage Act today, there is a certain extent of cohabiting that validates the aspect of marriage, by the way. I need, sorry? Yeah, the six months aspect and the society around you. You understand? That if you cohabit 
without another man for six months or more and holding yourselves as a husband and wife okay then that relationship can be recognized by the law as marriage are you are we together up to there then from there <laughs> You know, you know, if you look at it, I'm avoiding delving to a topic that, let me tell you, I said from the beginning, family law is a very broad, uh, uh, you know, unit. It's, it's not even a one unit in uh, practice. Eh? It has like, it, it is divided to almost four units. And each unit is a unit in a semester. So you can imagine if if we divert now to that now i'll only conclude with this way so that i don't close your question unanswered those are matters of evidence remember the way i answered that question and said that evidence now comes into play the, the question you asked me about uh, uh, a will done under duress or done under some pressure the issue of uh, evidence now comes into play now if i start defining how to validate that marriage or invalidate that marriage is another lecture. <laughs> you understand? But just know this. There are certain aspects that uh, are considered or certain uh, ingredients are considered to validate that marriage. It's not just cohabiting alone. There are so much. But if those ingredients are met that uh, in absence of the rituals that are done to validate a marriage like uh, the goats. Okay? There are other ways of uh, looking at Because, for example, uh, the way the society is today, the way the society is today, assume there are no other women. Assume there are no other women. It's only one woman. And my, my, my friend, you've been so busy here at work, eh? I would a time here kuenda kupeleka I'm a, you know, but once in a while in Christmas, you go to visit her parents. Now, for every year, Labda, Ukonaraka Sana, every year you bring a new child <laughs> to four, <laughs> you know, like that. And they start growing. And by the time you're going away, actually, the last one is about eight years, and the other one is, uh, say, 16. And all through, actually, your father-in-law has been saying, has been sending the daughter, na, na, na mutakuja lini. But because you, you know how to play your cards, there's a way you natulizanga that imze. What do you do? Once in a while, you natuma kitu. <laughs> Once in a while, you go visit uh, the mother, then you, you know, you do your thing, and they are happy that they are not able even to, to, to you know, <laughs> <laughs> not even that. <laughs> they, they, they are not able to ask for their debts because of the treatment you give them. You understand? In fact, uh, people even do things like Kanyumba ka mzeka meanza kuzeka, you rove it, you namjengea kengine hapo. Some of the same the daughter has done, but in actual sense, you are the one who is doing it. Namze knows as such. Over time, will you say you're not married to that woman? Can anybody on earth bang down and say, for sure, for sure, I know this man was not married to this woman? Does that relationship carry the aspect of marriage, you people? It does. It does. Okay? Now, this is when it happens like this. Let me give you uh, the last sentence of that example. Suppose it's her who goes first. Now, you want to bury her. Queen. That is the time mutajua hizo maskari ulikuwa na peleka siyo skari. Na siyo mbuzi. All the societies in Kenya, African societies in Kenya have that aspect. You've lived with my daughter for 25 years. Watch me, 25 years. 
you've never paid dowry she's still for that for purposes of that barrier of rights she belongs to the parents that is why you're told uh, pay go and come with waze mukechi na waze huko you pay some goats to validate that marriage so that you are allowed to bury her is that so it happens so in uh, so many societies and I, I, I saw one like two or so months ago. The, the, the woman was married somewhere in Meru. She was from Busia. So the Meru's, Meru Kacha, Luo Kacha. Okay? And the man had died some time back, like 10 years ago. And then two things had were surrounding that death so the man now a woman now died now like two months or so ago and now see they have to bury their mother children are grown ups i i know that family through the children uh the children are grown ups they want to bury their mother their grandmother from busia where the mother comes from is alive it says mimi and I'm saying where the last born is actually over 25. The last born of, of that home. Now, this is what happened. I'll give it a quick example. You know the unfortunate aspect of uh, you get married to a guy and but in by he dies before a year into the marriage. So she was married to a guy from Uko, their side, and he died within a year. They had not even had a child. So later he got married to a guy in Meru, but now this guy, that guy in, uh, they are from their place, had paid dowry. Then she gets married again without a dowry. That one was difficult. So, the reason I'm saying this is, uh, you know, all those things happen to so many people, to everybody. So, uh, those validations, they are valid. They are very valid. They also, they go to all aspects of family law. Eh? Because all those is, uh, it's within family law. Okay? All those with, is within family law. Can you imagine now, <laughs> the mother, that show show now, decides to challenge inheriting from this woman who is his daughter, who is her daughter. And now probably the properties, she had acquired properties on this side. And she says, by the way, I must be recognized. I come first. This is my daughter. I do not even recognize these children because they were not, uh, they were not, you know, I did not, they were not brought to me as, the family, you know, there are aspects that people bring, you know, complications with and and arguments that can, they even listen to court, they may not have a, a place so much in law, but you can imagine the problem that will be there. Are you getting it? So the, the, the society is more complex like you, than you're just seeing it here. Each person has their, their circumstances, you understand? But that is a case scenario of uh, that is closer even to to yours suppose somebody now the the, the family of that first husband claims that she is still our wife and she is, and she is. are you getting where the succession now aspect comes in now okay are, are you getting it now she has first estate somewhere maybe i don't know and it's in her name are you telling me that leave alone the mother where she was called to be buried if that family where she was married first also insisted she is ours we are going to bury her did they have a case now those, those are the, the aspects now I'm, I'm saying they they surround the, the law the family law with so many aspects uh, and the succession is just one of them there are so many other things you know marriage and divorce is an aspect children law is another aspect like that
Okay? Matrimonial property is an aspect. So those are the need for another day. So please yes. handle me. So um, what we can do, we would kindly request you to take the questions, all of them, and then respond so that we come to a close. By the way, in our calendar, we had uh, two sessions, Law of Succession 1 and Law of Succession 2. So because we knew this is a big uh, topic, so I think the best thing we'll call you again so that we can continue from where we have left, right? Because it Thank seems you. we needed like more hours than, than we already have. So we, we have a following online and there's some questions. So I wouldn't you to note them down. Yes. And when I am done, we're mm -hmm. going to take it to Kate. There yes. are two questions there. Mm -hmm. And then Engineer Saria has one and then we close. Uh, I would also suggest this. Yeah. Uh, when your question is answered, don't take it outside the answer. Yes. So that you also move fast. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, we can talk here and talk until darkness comes. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. So, and the once a question is also asked, we maintain the discipline of uh, not repeating questions. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, the first question would be Is there anywhere there's only one administrator? And then the second question is This is from Jane Juguna online. Is digitization of the courts a reason to prolong? the issuing of certificate of confirmation of grant beyond the six months if all parties are in agreement. Then we can go to Kate and Jackie and then Engineer Sari. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, I have three questions. Yes, I have. I had many, but maybe you can answer three. Okay, in the event that uh, there is a husband and a wife, so and either of the spouse in, is an absentee spouse, regardless of the fact that they are legally married, so maybe the husband or the wife disappears for some time, and then one spouse is left to either raise the kids and accumulate wealth. So if, in the event that that spouse comes back, and maybe the other spouse now who was left dies. Does the spouse have the right to claim the property if he, he or she was not included in the will? Okay, question number two. What are the challenges of, or the downside of joint property ownership during succession? Sorry, repeat that. Okay, what are the joint property challenges, I mean joint property ownership challenges during succession. For example, um, a property was financially acquired by both husband and wife, and then maybe one, the husband or the wife dies. So if there is maybe a child who is born out of, of wedlock or maybe some relatives who want to claim the property, so how, how does it go? considering that only these two people were involved financially to acquire the property. So the other question, is there a, an option for, instead of the wealth being divided, is there an option that the wealth can be, maybe can remain intact and the beneficiary can maybe only um, benefit from the proceeds? For example, if it's maybe the apartments, it's not divided, but the children or the beneficiaries can only benefit from the proceeds. Thank you. Um. Okay. Th thank you very much. What's your name? I'm Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Oh, yes. sorry. There is another question. Yes, yes. Um, thank you so much for the insights. I just wanted to ask, how do you best safeguard the will uh, such that it's not altered? Number one. Number two, uh, the beneficiary can access it when you're dead. And number three, you don't get prematurely killed so that someone can now <laughs> activate the will. <laughs> Wait a moment. Wait a moment. Just say it, uh, the second part. The second part, it's uh, how, how do you ensure that there is access to the will uh, once you, you die? But at the same time, you want to remain alive so that, uh, <laughs> yeah, until God takes you, 
Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Can I go ahead now? Or my last one, one last one. Uh, mine will be easy. I think those were very difficult questions. Uh, my name is Asari Ansoti. Uh, first, allow me to appreciate Dr. Catherine for putting up uh, this uh, talk. It's very important. The HR for giving us time. And uh, Kamunda, if I'm right, for the very insightful uh, uh, talk. Uh, mine will be a comment, a uh, clarification, and partially a question. So the first comment, I'm a, I'm a trustee of our, our scheme, and so these are things that we struggle with in each and every time we're sitting, more especially because people don't get to nominate their beneficiaries. So we are left with the discretion to apportion benefits based on how we assess the situation. So this is a call rather than a clarification that how will it be if each and every one of us would nominate a benefit? Actually, we will save our scheme a lot of expenses because we incur a lot of cost traveling to go find out where the beneficiaries are, who they are, and most of the time we have issues, we have tussles, where, because most of us men have so many families. Eh? <laughs> and uh, there's quite a lot of tussle before we uh, eventually arrive at who is a the right pool beneficiary and what is entitled to. So we'll save a lot of cost and we'll, we'll save uh, these beneficiaries a lot of struggle because some of those cases drag for so long and we see people suffering just because we did not nom nominate our beneficiaries. So this is an exercise. I think the forms are in the child desk. Anytime you pass by, it will be good if you did the nomination of beneficiaries uh, because it's something that, uh, as uh, uh, Kamunda has rightly said, you can change any time that you so wish uh, because we don't know when death uh, calls up or knocks at our door. So it would be very good to have those forms filled for all of us. Actually, we have less than 10% of the population of, of the 2,300 members of our scheme who have nominated their beneficiaries. Less than 10%. So you can see where we are. Every other case, every other late case, is an issue and we take a lot of time to deliberate and discuss on how we are going to handle uh, the benefits. So that was one that I wanted to clarify. Two, uh, I have happened to go through the law of the act of succession and uh, section 29 uh, exempts a few property that are not subject to the law of succession. That is the arable land and the livestock. And I remember you talk in your discussion about uh, uh, the ladies coming back to inherit land that they somehow were not apportioned when the parents were dividing because customarily, most of, our, most of us Africans, the ladies do not inherit. So most of, uh, most of our ladies have not got that advantage. And the, that section uh, exempts that part of uh, our property from being subject of succession. So I wanted some clarity so that uh, it's very clear whether the ladies can go and claim the arable land that they were not apportioned or uh, uh, does the constitution give the right that the succession act denies because it apportions that to the customary law and most of our customary laws do not allow for a success, uh, sorry, for inheritance by the ladies. Uh, that, that is a clarification I thought. And then lastly, it's a complicated question of a case, a case in a, a capture a case. Uh, you have a family, a, monog a, a polygamous family. The first wife is rightfully married with the legit children. And the second wife is rightfully married, but she is barren. And so she adopts children, who the father of the family recognizes as her own. So uh, unfortunately, the father passes on before uh, doing the will. And now comes up uh, the, the struggle. Who are the rightful dependents, first of all, because all these kids are above, uh, what do you call them? Uh, the, the 18 mark. They, they're not, uh, the yeah, the age of majority. All of them are at the age of majority. So who will be the rightful dependents and what is the criteria for apportioning the benefits now that they are all attain the age of majority. Do they, uh, are the wives the part of the dependents and the children, the, light, the rightful one by, by, by birth and those that are adopted? Do they have equal rights or how do you go about such a case? Thank you so much. I think you can answer them now. 
Thank you. Um, let me just review them quickly. Yes, we were at question number three. Uh, we have gone all the way to question number 13. I hope uh, by the time I am answering all these questions, we will have covered 97%. I can assure you it's not possible to cover 100%. Circumstances happen every day and they are new every day and they are peculiar every day. Okay? Now, can you have, this is the one, the, the first two questions are the ones you mentioned, Dactari, and the, they are the ones you say they came online. One, is that, uh, is there a case you can have one administrator? Now, uh, the law requires that you have at least two administrators, up to four, that is uh, what is written. But uh, we are talking about a case where uh you cannot trace any other person that can be associated with the estate of the deceased okay you must prove that you must prove that you're the only person who can be remember by the way uh, and I hope the person who asked this question is not assuming, and I'm sure so many of you are assuming that. By the way, an administrator does not have to be a beneficiary. Yes. An administrator does not have to be a beneficiary. You can choose to get someone else to fill that gap for purposes of meeting the requirement of the law on the number of administrators and that person does not necessarily translate to a beneficiary for example you are a single mother once you die the first priority should be given to your children remember so that i don't uh, confuse you the part that we're mentioning parents is in absence of the spouse and the children okay now you have children the first people should be your children and now these children assume they were under 18 or below the age of majority a sister or that is a, a, an auntie or an uncle or somebody else can come in for purposes of administering uh, the estate for purposes of these children. Now, by the time, so it can, it can he or she or two of them for purpose of meeting that capacity. Because remember, your children are eighteen, so none of them also can be an administrator. Okay, they must have cap legal capacity to sign documents. Okay, so how do you do it? Maybe your sis, the the sister or brother, or sister or two of them, uh, for purpose of meeting the requirement, can come in. And their capacity should be limited. And that is one thing I need people to put very, very keenly for, you know, families are coming in different ways. You know, you can decide, I just want to children, I want to have a husband. You understand? So, or a man, you can be left very early with the young children. Uh, so that even yourself, when you, by the time you're leaving, also your children are still underage. Okay. So you, the person comes in, by coming in does not give him beneficiary rights, beneficial rights to the estate of the deceased. They can only come in to study in for the children. You understand that uh, scenario? So that the administrator does not necessarily have to be here. So even in that case of a single administrator, it can be filled by a person who is not a beneficiary. I know the fear was, you are, I'm the only person. And I'm sure, almost sure that that question is emanating from that aspect. I'm the only person. You can nominate a person to be an administrator for purpose of the process. That does not convert that person to be a beneficiary. 
So it's a requirement of the law that uh, at least two administrators and unless a very exceptional uh, classical, I mean, uh, example, I mean, a situation where um, you are not able to get somebody else, which is not so easy. It's not, I mean, it's neither or not there, but in the event of that, then uh, the court can exempt you with the leave of the judge to do so. The court has to give you leave to have that. Uh, digitalization process affecting timelines of issues of uh, uh, confirmation of grants. Now, the estate of the deceased, I'm giving it as an example so that we conceptualize uh, the situation as it is since the court started doing uh, cases virtually. As late as uh, is yesterday or the day before yesterday? The day before yesterday. We do, court, we do uh, cases online virtually, you know, like we set up and cases are called out and uh, uh, Maria and uh, her client on the other side in Kajiando and a client in uh, Kapenguria uh, on a screen, me in Meru and my client in Kisumu or in Canada for that matter. I'll give, let me say, outside of the country. And we are here and uh, we want to confirm grant. I'll give that example because I said the day of confirmation of grant, we must be present. And the question is, uh, is actually surrounding that. Uh, if, and then there's your shoshu somewhere in Mount Elgon. You or your mother in Mount Elgon and elder in the village. Your uncle in Tsuyuka Cheriba Uko. And you, you cannot access in it. Remember I said this. All the beneficiaries and 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 the administrators must be present at the confirmation of grant. Now, naturally, if that is a requirement of that law, of that uh, is that is that is actually a mandatory requirement. And you are going to your mother in Mount Elgon, see you in anywhere. Those the others are able to log in, but those ones cannot get in. What will you do? Is that delay being caused by the digitalization or is it being caused by the individual problems? Yeah? Because you can imagine this, eh? Dr. how your siblings were blessed like you. And uh, one, you surprise your work in the energy sector and the engineers. And uh, one is working in uh, California in the that dam. That he's a, he's a lead engineer there. Another one is working to you in Greenland. Okay? But because uh, they are to that level in digitalized uh, world, and they are able to come up in confirmation of, uh, say, like your father's uh, estate uh, grant, eh? and they show up on time within the second, third week after the run of the six months, depending on the court diary, and it closes. As and digitalization hastened and fastened the process. Because initially, they would be required to physically appear in court in Kiambu. You understand? Now, I'm giving that example because I know Dr. Tari. Um, the time that uh, the court has given date for that confirmation. Your brother Kamau in Canada cannot get time to travel. When you get to the next date, the one in California has been sent by the employer in Japan for some cause. Are you seeing it? So to me, uh, the digitalization has uh, asked the uh, issues and it's only the personal challenges are the ones that are delaying. Otherwise, the digitalization process has, has actually made it faster and uh, cases are moving. You, you're finding cases that would take even 10 years, are even taking a year. 
because of di di uh, digitalization. You, you understand now? So that question, I've answered it. Then disappearance of a spouse, raise children, acquire property. Uh, this question was asked in a bit some confusion, but I'd clarify and I'll just divide it into two so that I answer it two way. Number one is, and there was left a will, but uh, the marriage was still valid. First of all, the absence during acquisition of uh, the property, because you said you are very particular that after that separation not divorce, separation, and each when they are away, they are absent. That's when this, and used to actually, the spouse in this case, I mean, uh, the spouse in this case, you said the husband disappeared. And they left the wife with the children. They are children, but disappeared. And then she decided to write a will. The fact that he was absent is a good reason for these children to argue our father was not there, he was not present in our lives, our mother struggled alone, we assisted her, or this and that happened. That is a good reason for him not to touch that will at all. In the event there was no will, and the marriage is still valid, and uh, uh, it comes back, and he can, he, you know, he flashes a marriage certificate. I'm still the husband. I need to be the one doing this. Again, those reasons of absence. Remember, we had said, remember the case we were saying about, uh, uh, sh you know, demonstration of contribution when I was given the case of two women and one came later. Yeah, Mary and Susan case. You remember the Mary and Susan case? That man must prove his contribution to that estate. You understand? That is an aspect that is used to protect somebody from taking, aggraging, or taking other person's life so that they inherit. Because if I, wherever I went in the world, I'm still a beneficiary of my wife's estate, regardless of what she acquired after I left. That it means knowing that with my ill motive I can organize for a demise so that I can come in. You understand? So those those are the, the aspects that uh, protect people in that way. So that person must prove their contribution to that estate. Joint properties, uh, uh, ownership during succession, husband and wife, and... Uh, now there's a child out of wedlock. <laughs> a joint property in succession, let's start with the spouse and spouse first. It refers to the other spouse. The, 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 the interest of the other, the interest of the, the deceased spouse refers to the surviving spouse in the first instance. Okay? So, it also carries this aspect. Children are equal. Children are equal. Okay? Now, uh, there can be argument that, and that please don't ask uh, questions in that line because it will take us tomorrow. Eh? Listen to this answer. The aspect of contribution can come in. That say the husband has uh, gone or even whichever way this is the wife who has gone. Okay? And say your children are grown-ups to which be able to make, uh, to argue their case, for example. Uh, these children belong to this mother, and this child is out of wedlock, but also belongs to this mother, who 
which mother never contributed to you know the aspect of acquisition and the value addition to the property assume it's a build a property i mean a land that was developed when the beneficiaries are arguing as to who gets what portion in what proportion that can be brought in they would say actually you cannot just walk in and want to get equal whatever with us because see probably you grown ups and we actually assisted our parents even to run the business in this building that can be brought in to argue the proportion of share by equality equality uh, the bottom line of equality is only that uh, you cannot give a, give him zero okay but proportion of share can be determined using such aspects am i clear now on that but i think i've even closed it so that uh, to not attract a question isn't it yes uh, the other one was uh, can uh, beneficiaries decide not to uh, say like divide an apartment say for example it's been uh, the source of income for the family to all of you and uh, say you're not fighting then you decide by the way uh, we can either decide we divide the apartments in it there's a block the apartments in it uh, to each person either two or one or so and you say let's continue what, what the, the 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 succession process must take place so that you get legal capacity of owning it so that you benefit from it there are two things i've seen uh, families do and uh, i'll give an example of myself and my big family is you can decide in to avoid the risk involved through the succession process you do a company a holding company and that can be done during the lifetime of your parents or the person owning the property or the the, the, the lifetime of the deceased you create a company that holds a holding company that holds the properties and you become directors in it or shareholders in it let's use shareholders because directors can be non shareholding directors let's use um, uh, shareholding you shareholder it so that you benefit now from it using that so that you don't have to subdivide it or 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 you know dispose it of so that you share the proceeds uh, another aspect of that is um, if uh, there are some people who are not yet uh, age of majority to become, say, uh, have capacity to shareholder in companies, you can have a trust on the side. The trust holds their shares in trust so that they, they are beneficiaries of the proceeds that you, you get from the apartment. And that way, you've created a legal, a legal structure that protects and holds in their trust. Number Yes, the next one is uh, how to safeguard a will. That question goes to ensure access to the will. The will is not a public document until you die. How is that? The will is not a public document because the will is done addressed to the executor. The executor is not supposed to read the will to the beneficiaries before the death of the testator. That is the person making that will. Okay? So, the executor and, and uh, in in most cases this is how people do it and that is the normal way of uh, securing it i am supposed to carry the executor with me and my two witnesses for example if i'm going to do it 
uh, at the advocate's office only the executor executor need not be a beneficiary for safety okay need not be a beneficiary remember where there's a will the issue of administrators is not there eh? so this one person called the executor is one who takes the position of uh, the administrators when there is no will eh? so this is the person who is entrusted by the person making the will the person who is entrusted by the the, the testator with that information okay now that security is meant to be kept uh, that, that that will is supposed to be kept secret by the executor until the death of uh, the deceased or the testator okay now that is how you ensure uh because you can imagine uh the cures you would cause remember my wishes are not necessarily the wishes of the beneficiaries isn't it remember uh, you in your children to rasamanga you to give birth to children some of them want to be thieves others want to be priests others want to be you know so all those people don't look at life the same way and that's one of the other aspect of uh, of of making a will so that you cover the people who can be taken advantage of by the ones who are bullies eh? so you way of ensuring that uh, you secure that will is it should only be known to the executor and the executor might be trusted in a way that he should not disclose the content of that will to any of the beneficiaries or to anyone until the death of course there are cases where an executor can also die so the executor like for example advocates are mostly executors uh, what happens is that um, when I'm running my farm, at the Law Society of Kenya, there's a form I fill and uh, I nominate the lawyer or the law firm that can run my client's uh, issues in my absence. So among them, uh, you know, uh, I will, or you are my executor is one of the aspects, isn't it? Probably even keep your secretive documents or your titles, isn't it? So that law firm that is nominated under the Law Society of Kenya is the one that can access my office and run all that. They will discover among them a will. Okay. Now, when that time comes, uh, then that advocate should disclose. Kamunda was executor of Kamau's uh, will. Okay. And it's by extension that advocate extends i mean it becomes the executor of that will by that trust so the, there's an aspect that covers that eh? okay so um there are events where the executor doesn't have to be an advocate in a, such an organized manner of course that is where now I, the executor is not there you still have to go to court to argue validity of that will. Now, remember the will as witnesses. If witnesses are alive and can be traced, they need to come to court and actually uh, testify supporting that they recognize that will in absence of the executor. Remember, executor is only supposed to facilitate, uh, if, you know, making it real, the wishes of uh, uh, the deceased, isn't it? So if the, the, the witnesses are there and this is what the wishes, then the court will actually validate by by way of uh, of um uh, you know a grant a certificate validating that uh, will so that the the estate can be distributed um my brother on trust trust uh, um you asked a whole broad spectrum of uh, of uh, issues to do with the trust now, um, trustees, trustees hold uh, property or whatever aspect of the estate of the deceased for the future of the beneficiaries of the deceased. 
and I believe that's what you're doing. Is that so? So that whatever interest you're holding in the scheme you're talking about is at the end of the day, in the event, the person who is that member, if he has disclosed his beneficiaries and the way of getting them, that's good. Easy for you, isn't it? The case of what you're asking for is what up, uh, how, how, how do you do it direct without going through the process of succession? Because uh, the law of succession is the one that has given the process of uh, passing the property or the estate of the deceased to the beneficiaries. And from what I've given is that you realize that uh, even if the property is really in trust, it is still has to go through the process. Okay? Now, uh, if you are able to get uh, the trustees, sorry, the beneficiaries, and the, you're able to ensure they are all of them, and they consent, either way, even if they consent, they must validate that through uh, a, a valid uh, certificate of confirmation so that when, if it's land, for example, and they are subdividing it, they want to transfer it to themselves in the different portions after subdividing. How are you, because you see, you're holding in trust, the trust shows the, 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 the title belonged to Kamau, giving an example, okay? But then you go to the register of lands. The register of lands only listens to, to uh, uh, you know, a valid court order that says, this person is not alive. Remember, you cannot do, you cannot do, um, you cannot go for, to land sports consent, isn't it? For consent, isn't it? Because the person is not alive. So, in that case, it is still has to be supported by that validity. But, you, but it, it shortens the process because people are not fighting. They are going to only say, validate this benefits we are having from uh, the consent so that we are able to transfer them to ourselves. Have I answered that? Thank you. Uh, then, uh, section 29 and the law of succession. Uh, firstly, as long as uh, anything forms part of the estates, I want to ask a reverse question so that I make uh, the comment I want to make about uh, your understanding of section 29. Uh, firstly, if it's land and it has a title and the person is dead, is there another? I'll ask your question back. You answer it, then I pick from there, okay? Is there a way a dis I mean, a property of a deceased person can pass to another? by transfer of title other than succession. Is there another way? Because he has died. It is his property. It's, it's Arab agricultural land, as you called it. It's agricultural land. I just wanted to tell you that, it is, that your interpretation is not necessarily right. Eh? If it's agricultural land, yes. Arab land. Okay? But the title reads in the name of Kamau and he has gone. Is there another way? So, this is what I'm telling you. The section 29 does not uh, uh, give uh, exem uh, those exemptions to the, to the extent that uh, it's not subject of, uh, of um, uh, succession, but it, it only uh, says that uh, it must be done in a certain way. Okay? So that uh, it, it goes to, to protection of variable lands in Kenya, because of the aspect of agriculture, but he only says that it should not um, say like for transfer of uh, of agricultural land cannot be done without spousal consent. Do you do you know that? Eh? So that uh, if if um, if the aspect of succession is met, then they can only inherit if it's you're not supposed to to, to divide it. Because dividing it is one aspect, and the, and the succeeding it is another aspect. It, it can be inherited jointly. 
you understand by beneficiaries jointly just like um like uh the if if you can't sell this building this is you never ikata kata so you can only inherit it jointly you understand there are circumstances where properties cannot be divided there are circumstances where property can be divided that does not exempt it from uh, uh being inherited because either way it cannot be left hanging it can be left hanging it must progress it must move forward uh then there is the issue of polygamous family first wife and children second wife adopted children and i'm happy you said they were recognized by the yes yeah mm. uh you your classification of land and mine were in totally different areas you were saying uh community land land owned by by say like um in your community say for example where i come from we have communities that we have clans now land is owned by clan x jointly now this person is a member of clan x and he has then and he has children what is the right of those people in that clan land where it's not very still held say like uh, the grazing lands of the masai uh, uh, am i now giving get, getting closer to you the grazing lands of the masai uh what happens where you cannot divide it because it is jointly held by many people who by their qualification is members of that community or that clan of the Maasai land or Maasai, Maasai, the Maasai people for example is you you go back to your 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 your, your clan or your wazes and then your father has died then you are adopted as the next person in those rights that's how you pass those rights you understand so that uh, it is now it is still has to go to traditions now the aspect that can be taken to court is where the beneficiaries on, are not agreeing who is going to be entrusted on their behalf therefore means the court can order all of you become members where you cannot agree you understand so that if you i don't trust my brother uh, kinwa can protect me and uh, my other siblings and other siblings believe the same then that aspect can be taken to court under the succession law i think uh, the arable land you're talking about they took it as it means agricultural land you what you want to say is that a community land those are different uh, aspects of land so is it clear now thank you uh polygamy uh polygamous family first wife as children second wife was barren and uh, adopted children but they were recognized by the deceased i think it's section 70 what is the 73 or something of the succession act it says this whether adopted or not whether they came with their mother but the key word how did the deceased treat them is everything if we took them in as his children and they continued being his dependents and grew knowing that there is dependence or whether they were aware there is not the biological father or not and they recognize them as his children the key word there is recognition you understand and in that case they are beneficiaries legal beneficiaries there is an aspect that uh, you did not i expected you to ask that because th that sounded like uh, it's obvious this guy recognized them as a, as his children or recognize them as his, uh, uh dependents but there is a case where probably she was supporting some children that did not know them he she adopted them without uh, bringing them to his knowledge and he never recognized them there they have to work hard to confirm i mean to to prove 
there is there is a dependence for them to qualify as a beneficiary because uh, everybody can come in and say I was being supported by this man so you need to I need to benefit from estate by being supported by the word dependent must have the aspect of uh, uh, of uh, qualification of beneficiary because uh, for example here and there you, you know I pick a need a child in some of the schools that I sit in the board and once in a while I pay their school fees or I support them in aspect another person does the same can you imagine if those children were to come and uh, tell my wife you know what eh? I depended on him I need to be a miss beneficiary that alone cannot qualify them there must be an aspect of association eh? all right uh, can I say thank you for this are you okay all right thank you so much and uh, thank you for listening to me i'm not a lecturer i have tried i address judges <laughs> i don't address crowds so uh, if you have taken it from there thank you very much and thank you i look forward to serving you again if you want to get personalized uh, contact you can pick a card from my uh, daktari thank you very much I have a partner called Andrew, but I won't give you his cards. I thought I'd carry on my cards, but that one you'll know him if you become our client. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We've learned a lot, isn't it? We've learned a lot. Somebody told me somewhere information overload. So she was trying now to digest whatever was taught. Thank you so much, our learned friend and guest, Dr. Ah, sorry, I'm used to Dr. Ann. Mr. Kamunda, thank you for the information. It was well delivered. Though you have said you're not a lecturer, I think you can be one, probably. Thank you very much. We will rise up, clap for our guest as I invite Catherine to come and give a vote of thanks. Then after that, we are going to have a few photos one with the pink energy officials together with uh, Mr. Kamunda and then the pink energy team and we'll be done for the day. So let's stand up then I'm going to show you how we are going to clap for Mr. Kamunda to appreciate him and the good work that he has done. As we also stretch, you can stretch your hands. I know we've been sitting for the longest period of time. Maybe wengine tujazoea kuketi hivo, just stretch your arms. Usitoke, usitoke, wata tumalizie pamoja. Those who are still here, let us not walk out. Let us all finish together. So we are going to, you remember the, you call it the parliament way of clapping. We do this. And then, but we are not going to stamp our feet while seated. Now we are stamping them while we are standing. All right. So we, we, we start with clapping our hands three times. Then we are going to snap our fingers three times then we tap stamp our feet three times all right one two go no no i disagree with that those claps as much as we are hungry they are not making any impact i want you to listen to my clap and i'm alone now can we do it together one two go number two Thank you very much. We can have our seats. Catherine will give a vote of thanks. Then we'll have and a prayer. Then we'll have a, a photo session. Um, thank you so much, Naomi. Uh, hi, everyone. I know I'm standing between uh, your lunch, so I'll try to be very brief. Uh, I would like to first say thank you to our guest, uh, Mr. Uh, Daniel Kamandu. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation. Thank you for coming all the way from Nairobi. And thank you for sharing not just your knowledge, your experience, but also relatable you know, stories. Think, things uh, we hear as stories, but things that you actually practice uh, as a lawyer. Uh, secondly, I would also want to thank the management, uh, HR, and also our GM for giving us the t support, the time, the facility, financially also, uh, to be here, to learn. 
And most importantly, I'd like to thank our Blue Energy. Thank you for coming. Thank you for making it so easy for us to continue saying that pink energy is just not about the ladies. It's about us moving toward, together towards success. And thank you also for the pink energy ladies here for coming through, for asking all this question. I am so happy that we are having a second session. I think it might be prudent for us to share a link so that you can ask all the questions, then we come and have a structured, just like a Q&A, because I've seen the Q&A session has taken another life of its own. And also to the Pink Energy Office, where I serve. Uh, it's been wonderful doing this uh, event uh, together, and I look forward to continue serving and um, you know, just making the difference. Uh, for for everybody. That said, um, also to our service providers, let me not forget them. I hope in the course of you serving us, you've taken away something. So I would also want to ask that um, when we go back to our station, our homes, and our community, let us practice what we've been taught. Let us share in the knowledge. I'm personally looking forward to having my win. Yeah. And, and just digging through the deep uh, question, who will be my executor, who can I trust? It really brings a lot of things that we have to think about because we are in the land of the living, we are living, and we have to address this question. So I hope by coming here, we've not really made you think about death so much, but more of how you can live your life to the fullest. Um, allow me to welcome my sister Dorothy. We're in the same section with her for us to give us the closing prayer. So, Dorothy Karibu. Thank you, Catherine. Let's be upstanding. Let's believe as we pray. Our Father and our God, our gracious Master, we want to thank you because of the time that we have had together. Thank you because we invited you as we are beginning this session to be with us and we have felt your presence in this gathering that has been without any interruption. We want to thank you for our guest that has taken us through a knowledgeable session of understanding succession. And we want to thank you for the knowledge that he has imparted. That as we live and also, uh, as we plan for our exit, that is, in, is inevitable, because that is your will, let us uh, allow us to have the ability to write our will even for the generations that are coming uh, after us, dear Lord. Thank you because of this wonderful company that you have made us be part of. And also thank you for the pink energy and even the blue energy and the company at large. I pray for the leadership of the pink energy that has made this possible and also pray that you be with our managers. We also be, you be with our MD and every other person that is driving this organization. How I pray, dear Lord, that you also bless the work of our hands, that as we work even to make, to run our families and also to drive this company into greater heights, that you may be able to bless us, O oh God. I also want to pray for the company of the facilitator, uh, Mr. Kamunda, that you also bless his work and also uh, let him have this knowledge passed to many other people. God, we want to pray that as we break now, you may go with us and also put us together in unity and above all, may you bless us entirely in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Sante ni sana Tunashukuru Kwa kila mmoja ambaye liweza kufika Pink energy officials Let's be here for the photo
sasa itakuwa hapo nje so the, the ladies please don't go hold on for one minute